Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew, your best source for the newest Atari games, and today we're going to be playing 2600 games. Whoa! Specifically one 2600 game, and it is Turbo Arcade. And For a second is, there, you looked at me and you were like, can it you, is? Can, can, and I was like, what, what, what is it, Darcy? <laughs> can you tell me what it is? And Darcy's Turbo here, Arcade. too, by the way. <laughs> uh, it's a uh, exclusive uh, update. Very muchly reworked and updated. Very and muchly. Very muchly. And also, not only that, we have the developer for an interview, John Champo from Champ Games. He'll be coming up shortly. Uh, but first, I want to thank all the Twitch subscribers. All this of them. Is, all of them, including Darcy. He's on this list oh. today. Al Nefar, Atari 74, Atari, Atari, Maximus, Beef, Beef Supreme, BR Pocot, Buffalo, Pinball, Charles Donnie Mao, Charles Willen, Chitlala, Colonel Lama, Dianoid, Danifacy, Daryl Nudge, 70, Drexel, Duck, Mook, Has, Gamma Dev, Glenn, Main, Grey Defender, Kratoms, Ground Trooper, Orgy Rapper, Johnny WC, Johnny WC, who is on the line, uh, Computer Kenzo, Carl G, Ken Jennings, Invader, Gavaltiver, uh, Kev Kelly, Lambda Express, Lauren TDZ, Mark Yannis, Mark Space, Inc. Military 969, Make Muse, Mike Soul, Mike Tatal, Miss Command, MK Smith, Mother 3, Mrs. Arnold, with Mr. Fix, Nathan Strom, Neo Mini, Nostalgia Pack, for VG Coog, Ariman, CRC70, Render Ghost, Penless, VG Gore, Cardo Pim, Sledgehammer, Smitty B, Spice, Rest, Mayors 2008, Teleprompter, Tiki Down, KT, Foes, Track MD, VVG Double Down, X, Ken, X, and if you want to support the show and subscribe, it's free with uh, Amazon Prime, and you can do it just like. Ground Trooper, Carl G, S. Ramirez did before the show. And does Ta did Tanya do it yet? She didn't, and I even talked to her about it last episode, and she didn't well, subscribe. She just you're going to have to file her with papers. Yes, official <laughs> papers delivered to her door saying, uh, I noticed you have not subscribed <laughs> despite uh, being a co-host, which is uh, very not good. Um, it's muchly not good. Muchly not good. It's really <laughs> bad, in fact. It's very muchly. Um, so, uh, thank you for tuning in today. Um, <clears throat> it's going to be a very interesting show. It's go because of the news. That happened yesterday. I'm sure just about probably everybody is aware of what happened yesterday. But uh, if you're not, we're going to do a recap of it and uh, tell you all about it. Um, so the news is about, uh, removal of games from the Atari age store. Um, and I reached out to Al about this and asked him if he wanted to be on the show, but unfortunately he couldn't make it. So, uh, to the show today, but so maybe, maybe another day. Um, so Al posted yesterday on the Atari age forums about a fairly sizable announcement, in my opinion, anyway, that 92 titles were going to be removed from the Atari Age Store, including 13 titles from John Shampoo and 25 titles from Bob DeCrescenzo, um, aka Pac-Man Plus. Um, so what he posted, um, at least one person on the, uh, on the chat <laughs> was not aware of this, so this is going to be a big surprise for them. Um, Albert posted, uh, we're having a huge sale on a large variety of 2,600, 5,200, and 7,800 games in the Atari Age store. This will be your last chance to buy the games on sale. If you've been holding off on buying uh, some of these titles, now is the time to pick them up. These games will be removed from the Atari Age store once the sale has completed. Some of these games have a limited number of boxes, and once those are exhausted, no further boxed copies of these games will be available. All the games in this sale have been discounted by 10%. The sale will now run through Sunday, July 23rd, so that's a month exactly from now. Uh, due to the expected volume of orders, which is going to be massive, uh, it will take uh, about a month or possibly longer for most orders to ship. Uh, click this link to see a complete list of games on sale. Well, they're right below. Here's a list of the games on sale by system and um, a bunch of 2600 games as you can see um reproductions of 2600 games a uh, number of hacks including trackball games on the list as well uh a number of atari 5200 games um atari 7800 games and says yeah the sale runs through uh saturday uh july 23rd and you may notice a pattern here of what these games are. Um, 
And Dr. Venkman said, um, replied to this. He was the first one to reply saying forever. And Albert um, replied to that. Yes, I'm going to be focused on publishing original games and those uh, for which licensing can be procured. It's possible that some of these can come back, but it will take some time to do the legwork. I wholeheartedly encourage developers to create new games that aren't encumbered or to ask me in advance regarding projects that might be derived from others' work. So, in other words, a lot of, well, all of these are ports mm -hmm. of games. <clears throat> um, as you can see, Colony 7, Crazy Balloon, Draconian. A couple of people Caledon. mentioned <laughs> the end. Uh, the end, yep, yeah, that, yeah. that is an arcade game. They may not be familiar with it. It's not okay. a super well-known um, arcade game. Um, but I actually played a ton of that game. Um, somebody made it for uh, the Commodore 64 and uh. the Atari 8-bit, and it was called... Um, starts with a B. Can't remember it right now, but I played it a the ton. Band the Bandits. Oh, Bandits. That did prompt me to remember it. <laughs> uh, Bandits. It, it was quite different gameplay, and it had a different name, so... A little bit different. Um, so that that is the news, and um, so we're not going to get on on this stream. We're not going to get into speculation on why these unauthorized ports were are being removed from the Atari Age Store, um, and that's for Albert to talk about uh, if and when he wants to. Um, there's no point in speculating about it. Um, but today we're going to be focusing on the impact and the reactions. Um, from the community and what the future of Atari uh, homebrew ports look like. Um, and uh, he, he didn't remove some games, some ports from the Atari Age store. Um, of course like, you can. What is if we can oh, you can speculate all you want. I can't control you guys. <laughs> I can kick you out, but I can't control you. He can try to control you. <laughs> That's right. Right. Fail. I will oh, fail. Yeah, Thank yeah, you for yeah, resubscribing, yeah, Nathan Strom. Um, so there were some uh, Load Runner uh, was not removed. Boulder Dash was not removed because they are licensed games. Ah. Um, so they obviously <clears throat> remain in the store. There's, there's no problem because he did. Oh, kitties. Atari has asthma. Poor little kitty. Um, those are those are authorized uh, ports. They're, they've got permission from the, it's treat from time. the IP yum, holders. Yum, uh -oh. Yum, oh, it's treat yum, time. Yum. Um, so we'll continue this in a second. So pretty good timing. Oh, kitties! They're pretty fast now. Oh, it's not actually a very good time. Oh, you better? Uh, he's magically recovered. Come on. Come on in. Come on in. Just put the bells down and start the game, and then you can... Uh... No! We gotta get this cat in here. No, he'll come in. Don't force him in. All right. Don't force away. him in. He'll I come in. I, 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 I chased them both out. I chased them both out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get the scoreboard up. <clears throat> you can hold with us, John. <laughs> for cats being fed. All good. Okay, cats ready? Zero, zero. Time for cats. Atari. Oh, oh, that's Atari's bell. That's Sprite. He's got a point. Come on, Atari. It's 1-1 one, one. tied. Oh, Sprite's on the, be on the ball or the bell. It's two on the one. Bell. Oh no no oh. no! Too soft to touch. Oh, Atari has tied it up two two. Oh, Sprite has finally found his paw and has dung the bell. Oh, now he's really found it. it's four two. Oh, Atari's at three points now. Sprite is of course inhaling them as usual. Oh, too soft too soft to touch. He's at five three. God. Is Atari hungry enough? Yes. Just they both got good at catching thing. them out of the air. Sprite caught it out of the air last one last he, time. He, like, he, he did it to me. Mouth, with oh, his I mouth. see. It's crazy, crazy, crazy. Oh my goodness, seven four, seven five. Atari could catch up if he starts really inhaling them. Sprite is still always oh, distracted. Oh, soft touch, but he got it. Eight five. There's not much chance left for Atari. He's really got to ding the bell. It's six, and it's game point for Sprite. Nine to six, and it's game over. Ten six. It's Grab all those done. Those bells, It's all done. It's all over, but of course the crying because the crying never ends. All over, but the crunching. There we go. We define. We cold define a handicap for both. Yep. 
Tari has upped his grab game. He has. Sometimes to his own detriment. Okay. Um, so some of... some Someone in the comments, of uh, wherever the comments were, asked, uh, asked me about the ratio of ports to original games that are released. Um, so since I keep track of, uh, of this for the Atari Homebrew Awards, I pulled up the stats from last year, games released in 2022. Um, so for Atari 2600 games, comparing originals to ports, um, there were 113 original games <coughs> released and uh, thir or worked on, being worked on, this includes works in progress, um, and finished games, and also games being sold in box or on cartridge. 113 originals to 35 ports. So 24% of games are ports for 2600 last year. Uh, sorry, are they both games worked on? Being worked on in okay. any process. So they're all like individual games being worked on. Um, for Atari 7800, there were 27 original and 28 ports. So actually more ports than original games. Uh, at 51% uh, of ports for 7800. Of course, 7800 development has just started taking off, so that may factor into it, where there's a lot of people wanting and to make it, games for 7800. Is, is it more doable to make a port for 7800? Like, is it, like, more achievable? Like, it I, takes more... That's up to the developer, really. Yeah. I mean, yeah. a game is a game. Right, but what I mean is that, like... With the 7800, are you well, more likely to make it, if you're picky about making it very legit, is it gonna? Is it more likely to be closer to the original that they're porting? Because, because just, the 7800 has yeah. more capability yeah. in that regard, yes. And I think more people are making ports because there are more ports available to be made oh, yeah, yeah. for the That's, 7800, but the 2600, a lot of ports already have been made, so yeah. the number have been reduced down. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, and Ivory Tower Collection said it's because the 7800 has more power to do a port more justice. So I yeah. think people are very attracted to the 7800, especially for like early 80s games. It can translate them quite well. Um, so not an insignificant number of games being developed for the 2600 and 7800 that are ports. Um, and like I said, there are a few licensed ones in there, like Load Runner and Boulder Dash, but the majority are, are not. They're not licensed. Um, so, uh, let's see. So people need to keep in mind that this whole thing uh, not only affects games that are put on cart or sold versus binary. IP infringement isn't tied to money. Like, they don't care if you, like, by the letter of the law, mm -hmm. the IP holders don't care if you're selling it or not. They may care, like individually, but mm -hmm. by the law, it, it really doesn't matter. Um, so even giving away a port that you created isn't legally allowed. Uh, but it may not attract as much, at much attention as one that's sold, because there's a box and it looks pretty, um, but it's still not legally allowed. So there's a, an array of reactions that happened, of course, when the news came out. Um, from surprise, to smugness, to anger, to panic <laughs> lots like every reaction you can think of a lot of people fell into two camps one that saw the news in black and white where it's like no it's illegal it's, it's like too bad they should have known it and others that saw it in shades of gray of course one group was saying that's a clear ip infringement and should never been made in the first place uh, another group said that these ports are labors of love and would never see the light of day on these systems if they are not made by the community. Mm -hmm. Like, just not possible. Like, would the IP holders of Galaga ever go back and make a 2600 port of Galaga? Yeah. Never. Yeah. Never! I can't imagine that ever happening. Yeah, I agree. So, yeah, yeah. without people like John Champeau, mm -hmm. we just wouldn't have this. It just would not exist, and we wouldn't be able to enjoy it. Nope. So, therein lies the shades of grey. It's like... D d should they care that this game that they would never make and never make money on and never sell? I don't know. Some well, do, some I, don't. I think it, it... I could be wrong. It could be different with games. But I think the, the way it works is if you don't shut people down, then you lose the ability to shut people down. On trademark, yes. Okay. On copyright, not so much. Okay. Trademark, you, it's written into the law that you actively you have to, have to it, defend yeah. it. Or it dilutes your trademark of of that of that IP. 
but copyright there's so much wiggle room in copyright that you don't have to go after every single copyright because you'd be out of money from lawyers so here's just a small selection of comments there were hundreds of comments um jason white said i'm frankly kind of surprised they did the ports as long as they did sure most publishers aren't going to care but it's only a matter of time until they find one that does alexander leonard says it's a very sad day for the atari 2600 homebrew community michael knight said i would say that it's that is the homebrew community that kept these ips relevant uh enough for them to become profitable then the ip holders come in and tear it down for everyone where have you been all these years nowhere exactly where you would be still without us sorry to hear this brad mcfagan said uh i will be placing multiple orders now as money allows unfortunately with only a given uh, a month's notice i'll have to prioritize which ones i'll purchase i will certainly be sad letting the ones uh, i can't afford get away so of course people are scrambling mm -hmm. to try and buy all these these games they haven't uh they haven't bought because yeah, now yeah. they have a month and they're like okay which ones do i choose i only have you know x dollars to buy them mm -hmm. um so that's kind of the reaction that's been from the community completely not surprising that there's a range of reactions because there's been always a range of reactions to ports and uh games being recreated on these systems but as a whole the the, the community loves them they obviously now they're available to play on these consoles and yeah. they were not before um so speaking of ports <laughs> let's uh let's get into turbo arcade uh which is an absolutely amazing port and we do have john shampoo on the line we're going to uh, plug in our Meryl, so we can hear him. thank you for subscribing repentless vg so here you go which one do you want the Just one with left. the most earwax in it like, ahead of time <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. That might be it. Um, let's see how much earwax that one has been built up. Hey! <laughs> okay, just do a little test. John, can you say something? Oh, nope. Oh, yeah, because he's not on the focus. Uh, okay, let's bring him on the screen. Can you hear me now? Hello, Mr. Shampoo. Hey, James, how's it going? Oh, still I'm not hearing. I see him coming through. Now. Are these on? Oh, they're not on. <laughs> that could be the issue. Let's turn on the broadcaster. I'll do it. Oh, same connected. Oh, I hear and something. I think we might have John now. That's one less. Can you hear yep. me now? Yes, we can hear, we you, can now. hear you now. Welcome to the show, John. <laughs> <laughs> very, very good. Uh, how are you doing? Good. Given everything tired, good 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 but, yeah, i bet well. <laughs> <laughs> and i thought you know we were going to put on turbo arcade on the show <laughs> today anyway yeah and i thought and you thought what better person to come on to to talk about all this after we're going to play the game first but we're going to talk about it after than somebody who is quite affected by what's happening and we'll have to reformulate and figure something out and because Atari age will not be carrying your box games anymore uh, and games on cartridge. Yes. Louder. OK, we will turn John. Thank you. Um, but we uh, let's let's enjoy ourselves first and celebrate <laughs> yeah. your game. Perfect. Time, and right? uh, have some happy times. Yeah. <laughs> so so it is good timing, but also it's not a fun time at the same time. And, and I know you're you're bummed but anyway that's let's let's save this so we haven't uh so this is where we're revisiting turbo arcade from last time we played it was about a year ago and there's been some major major updates that you've done to this game yep um was it a year ago i think it was two years ago actually wow. oh oh yeah i think it was two years ago but the last we played it last a year ago oh, okay from, for something yeah, yeah this is yeah. A, this is the first yeah. um new build that's been published for for a while the, the original yeah <laughs> yeah and the demo was released right yeah yeah okay so um should we load up the game and then we can start uh start looking at it and talking about all the improvements and updates yeah sure i got a little list here oh. excellent so i'll give darcy the controller 
And he's going to be uh, using a joystick controller, and I'm going to give him um, some basic instructions. Um, we're going to put it on automatic shifting for now. Yeah. And you just press the button to accelerate, left and right to steer, and that's it. <laughs> Pass Very cards simple. for a high score. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Reduce it right down. <laughs> Pass cards for high score. Okay. So everybody save up their uh, questions uh, for after, well, for the other type of questions, but you can ask uh, Turbo questions right now. Just put question in, in capital letters and so I can see it or John can see it. Okay, so let's load it up. So I think this is new this screen select control oh did darcy press something don't hey, press something darcy oh, oh, darcy until instructed to do something. i was instructed hey. by the screen <laughs> so it says press button for joystick and turn wheel for driving oh my goodness what is this wheel thing so you're selling a wheel with the, with the game oh no, no yeah <laughs> yeah so um one of the one of the changes we did is we added um driving control support um so Fortunately, there's no easy way to detect or automatically um, that the driving controller they look the same when they're when they're on startup unless you turn the wheel itself because what happens is the driving controller will eventually register up and down together um, so that's how you know it's a driving right so so that's that's the only difference so we just put this here so that way people know that okay if I turn the wheel then it knows I'm using the driving controller as opposed to you know pulling and you know just guessing and stuff like that so now obviously if you press a button um press the joystick button then it knows you want to use the joystick so right so this is the i didn't do it it, it timed out What's yes it me i did notice that i left that on that screen on once and it's like oh you have a joystick <laughs> yeah yeah it, it gives you well, i think one minute to, to make your choice so yeah uh okay so you've you've we're going to be doing the joystick first, and then we'll get into the driving controls so that Darcy can at least some, do, put in some practice. Yes, it's good. Um, so I don't know if uh, the title screen has changed uh, um, or the credits or anything here, yeah, except the, for that auto shift. I think that's different, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, the colors are different. Before, it was just you didn't really know whether you were using auto or manual, um, except when you started the game. So now when you flip the left difficulty, that. Um, image will change in the title screen to show that I'm about to play the game with automatic or manual shift. So something in Nathan's rub. Right. You did pretty well there. So Yeah, yeah it's really, really cool uh, graphic there. And I think it's left difficulty to, to switch that? Yes, absolutely. Yep. So if you just So we're just gonna switch it and show the manual shift, but we're gonna go back to um, auto shift for now. And so what I think, uh, what other options are there on the screen? I think you can go left and right for the difficulty. Yes, yep. Novice. Yep. So we did add in challenge, and but right now there's no, uh, we didn't have time to actually put any additional features into challenge, except it is more difficult than advanced, but we do have some ideas of some some other, kind of like we did with uh, our other games, where challenge will actually have, like, additional enemies um, and other uh, obstacles and things like that, so. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah. Oh, one second. Um, so I think it gives it an added layer of realism <laughs> that you describe the other cars as enemies. Yes, <laughs> they are enemies. I see them when I'm driving. Racers, exactly. <laughs> opponents, how's that? <laughs> evil op evil that opponents. <laughs> you always do that. <laughs> <laughs> evil opponents, just... One second here. <laughs> that was awesome uh, power. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think you should probably start on novice, just so we can get further in the game. Not saying you're a novice, that. just so you can like dominate. I'm only going the game. on novice because he made me. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Okay, let's let's load up novice. Should I press the button? Yes, okay. press the button now. So, so, Dark, so this the, is the, new as well. Yeah, the, the object of the game is that once you start... Okay, here's here's some new um, options here right now. Is that you can, There's two tracks, so you can select either arcade or enhanced. I would suggest we just start with the... So if you go right, left to right, you see the arrows pointing left and right. 
So yeah. So those are the options you have there. So uh, I would say just press a button. Okay. And then oh, you should have a, this is a new as well for um, the time of day. It's the stream is slow over here. I'm not seeing it like 10 second delay or so. But here there's four yeah. different um, types of uh, um, times of day that you can start at. Um, and that'll just that affects the palette itself. Um, and color screen, uh, color color scheme as well. Very nice. Exactly. So it's so going, does, going to start. Does this it, start? What's that? Sorry. Uh, so this starts at different stages of the game. So this will also dictate uh, difficulty. No, it starts always starts at the beginning of the day. It's just at the beginning of the um, the track. So it's always going to start at this, this the city, but it's just the time of day will be different. So that way you get to see other scenes based on uh, you know with different colors. Do you have to push okay. forward? Looks like yeah, you pressed the button. Looks like you jumped right in there, so. <laughs> you did. It wasn't me. Because it was one. Did it, time out? it timed out. Yeah, I didn't oh, press the button. Okay. Yeah. Should, it, should I reset it? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. If you hit, hit reset, you might as well just uh, so okay. I can explain the difference. Oh, there we go. Okay, so go back to yeah, arcade. Yeah, and so then arcade is midday. And, like, um, and then you should have an option for the time change. And this. Um, I can't see, yeah, unfortunately. So yeah, um, press a button. Okay. Okay, time change. Yeah. Normal. Uh, normal, fast. Normal, so, fast, or none, so, or slow. Yeah, so if you put none, then the palette will never change. If you do normal, uh, then okay. I think uh, full day is 12 minutes on normal. Um, and then if you go um, slow, it's uh, 24 minutes and 6 minutes if you go to um, fast. Okay. So if you want to see the colors change faster, then you just like the fast. So. Oh, okay, and that still does not affect the gameplay whatsoever. No, it's all just about colors, but um, yeah, exactly. Very nice. So. That's cool. That's really, really cool. So. Oh, no. And somebody said uh, the track border is new here. Thrust asks. Um, so the sides of the track. Oh, hell. Oh, no. Um, it may be. Yeah. Um, I know we've <laughs> redone a lot of things, like the city was different. Basically, uh, I can just talk technically a little bit. Basically, this sure. entire thing was rewritten from scratch at the engine. It may look similar, wow. but um, as far as the uh, variety now, it's, uh, um, previously we were basically it was almost like a movie player where we had 300 or so rendered scenes Ooh. that you just play in whatever order you wanted to. Do you see that? Frames, I should say. Um, but now the frames themselves are generated dynamically. Um, as far as like the objects that are moving the screen, the stripes, and the background. Um, That's amazing. So now you have infinite number of scenes, basically, because you can say, hey, I want so trees on the left, I want uh -oh. shrubs on the right, or you know, I want to alternate them, I want to space them out differently. Um, right. It also adds. So you've kind of. Yeah, sorry. Keep going. So, so you've kind of got went super crazy and pre rendered things, and then you kind of brought it back to what. Um, kind of what a, a game normally renders pieces at a time, yes. which is kind of interesting. Exactly. So, so you can so you can mix and match trees and tracks and and things in the distance and whatever whenever you want now. Yes, exactly. And also adding new scenes. Uh, before, if we wanted to add like a new scene, like a desert scene, something like that, we'd have to pre-render the whole thing, and it would take up probably like 4K even when it's uh, um, compressed. Now we can do a desert right. scene. It's like it took like a hundred bytes, because it was just you know you was able to reuse the stripes. You know we had different palettes. Um, you know we well, actually took a little more than that because the objects themselves actually still take up a little bit of a uh, um, little bit of space because they have to be. We do pre-render those. We're not um, resizing them on the fly. So so like every tree you see right. has to be pre-rendered. So there's like 48 of them. So even compressed, it takes up like a K. Um, <laughs> yeah, but, a lot of graphics. <laughs> yeah, Un uncompressed. It's like 4K <laughs> just for all the just the tree graphics alone. So obviously the shrub is smaller, so they take up less. Um, that's, also that's, see we have probably the, uh, the biggest tree graphics in a 2600 yeah. game ever. <laughs> hey, if you look at the back, they also have the mountain scrolling in the background now. They also scroll off. Wow. Yeah, and the city rose up. I don't know if that was there before. Or did it just appear on the screen before? Yeah, exactly. So yeah, so it rolls up. Why now. does the ambulance ride away from me? I have obviously just had a terrible accident. Yeah. 
<laughs> the ambulance should be taken care of. He already, he already has somebody else to take care of. You're the one who crashed yourself. You, you crashed. Remember, it pulled to the side when it yeah, took off. There you go. Yeah. No, I've had a lot of practice of pulling over to the side. And as the car colors crash. change when it's big, it looks a lot more colorful. Yeah, it does look like very with the colorful, yellow yeah. stripe. Um, uh, it, it has been modified. Um, looks really good. Thanks. Yeah, I the, want one of the. We did them all. We I did want like, one of the indestructible NPC cars. <laughs> <laughs> Darcy would like to upgrade to the uh, indestructible uh, enemy cars, <laughs> or right, enemy or cars. the ambulance. That can go faster than any car in this game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Amo just uh, hangs around for a bit and then it kind of pulls. So, um, thrust asks, do we have to play advanced, enhanced, to see crazy screen combinations? Uh, no, well, I mean, they're all. Uh, we still have to design the maps themselves. We are considering putting, um, trying to design, if we have the room, a random track generator. So. You know, using basic nice. rules, it'll you know start with the city, then go into a hill, and then maybe throw a tunnel at you or whatever. Uh, we haven't done yet that yet, but um, no. If you play the enhanced um, track, that has all the new scenes, ah! like uh, and the new uh, features, like uh, we have new weather effects, like rain. Um, even though you don't actually see the rain, but the, wow, um, it does. Uh, um, it stimulates a, a rainy road. Um, and also uh, desert and right. two others. So, uh, um, so yeah. So, so there would be more puddles on the ground, maybe. Yes, exactly. Uh, in the rain. Yeah, yeah there's more puddles. You yeah. hydroplane, uh, like in desert. There's like dirt right. kicking up, and you know, um, there's also an ice scene where you skid across the entire road. You get a counter steer. So it means, uh, there's, there's a bunch of things you have. So, Are you supposed to drive slower. Well, you're not supposed to go so fast that you can't see cars. Well, there's an on-off thing. It's, it's the, the button that's on or off. It, it is a digital uh, uh, gas pedal. <laughs> yeah, your yes, visibility in, in the tunnel pedal. is limited as well. So, so it's just dark. Well, I thought I just didn't it. have very good uh, and on the reaction turn time. I didn't well. realize it was that I was going too fast. Yeah. Well, you much like have in to, real life, you have to kind of feather the pedal. Um, uh, so that you, okay. that's what I do anyway. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's sense. some top-notch players that can like slam on the gas and just go whoosh, 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 whoosh. Um, so let's see. <clears throat> uh, oh, VVG Double Down says the arcade game had a digital gas pedal too. Yes. Uh, granted, two bits, so there are four, uh, four variations, I guess, off, a little bit on, a little bit more, and full. Yeah. Unfortunately, okay. yeah, we, we, we don't have that luxury, but uh, yeah, so basically what you should no. be doing, Darcy, so just going, you know, 210 the entire time. It's when you see cars, just let go a little bit, kind of glide back, and then yes. swerve. There's yeah. just, there he goes. He's he's kind of got it now. Yeah. That's what I do. Yeah, that's exactly it. I go full out, wait for a car, go off a bit, and then swerve. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if you noticed the, uh, the, the tail lights here on uh, the, the morning scene, so. Oh. Ooh, we'll have to look for that. Let's yeah. see. Yeah, you see him? Uh-oh. Yeah, that turn is deadly. Make sure you kind of just... Oh, what I do is I just pace and slow, slowly uh, go around cars on the turn. Very, very deadly. Um, so you mentioned to me that... It's the first time I survived This is the actually in... I didn't know that the ah. last one, I'm sure you mentioned it, but the last version of this game is in 30 frames per second. <laughs> And yes. This is in full 60 frames per second. Yes, exactly. Like at top speed, in the old game, it would show the same frame twice. Um, so it would basically show you 30 different frames a second. Yeah. So uh, in this one, it's now a full 60 frames. So if you're when you're running at top speed, you're basically seeing a different frame every. Uh, so all the objects and all the backgrounds are. Um, rendered at 60 frames per second so right so a lot smoother yes yeah that's that's kind of why we jump from 64k to this is a 120k what you're running at 128. okay i'm winning now wait yeah and, I'm, I'm ahead and of all the cars i started with but there are more cars oh there's infinite cars they are there to mess you up uh, yeah. so 120k that's a very strange number yeah is, it's, it's basically is, just because of the dev card that fred sent us um it's okay. limited. It's, I don't know, he explained it, the technical reason why, but there's uh, um, eight of that K is being used for something because I thought it just didn't work. But he said, I'll try to just burn 120K. 
so I tried that <laughs> and, and it worked. So that's uh, kind of the uh, workaround. And I think the actual carts that the game will be put on, if it, if it does eventually get put on car, um, will be 120k. So it's yeah. kind of what we're limited to. So, so in Stella, I have to rebuild oh, okay. it because the 120k version is still over the crash. Um, so I have to rebuild. Oh, okay. Which is a big deal, but I so I have two versions. Uh, Stella version is 120k. Okay. So let's uh, reset this and uh, show the manual shifting now. Um, for Darcy. There we go. Oh, I think we have to go there. Okay, so we're going to switch to manual shifting. And, yeah, novice. And I was playing manual shifting at the beginning anyways. <laughs> yeah. Who are you? I was, yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. So let's get into that. By yep. mistake. Oh, funny. Okay, so it is up and down for the shifting. So you're in low, and then you go down for high. No, there's only two oh. gears. Yeah, only so, two gears. So basically, when you're at four bars, so you speed up on the top, RT, you want to shift in the yeah. high. Then you can oh, also okay. shift on the low if you want to uh, slow down really fast. Like so you can see a bunch of cards. And you can, ah. So you can also downshift. So. Yeah. It looks like it, it downshifts, it like slows you really fast down when you slipped in, shift into low gear. Yeah. Which is good when there's a wall of cars, that's for sure. Yeah. We've also redone the hill animation, if you notice, like, when this is done, it scrolls off nice and smooth now. I forgot what it did before. I think the hill scrolled back up, but we made that more arcade uh, arcade accurate. Um, I shouldn't be saying right. that, I guess. I mean, we came up with this creative, <laughs> original idea of how to do the uh, hills. And, that's uh, right. Yep. Yeah. And that's what we that's came weird. up with. But um, <laughs> and even in the ar in in a very similar game in the arcade called Turbo, um, the the scene switches are extremely abrupt, and I was I was kind of surprised by that, especially like when it switches from the straightaway to the turn with the wall. Like there is no transition whatsoever, which I found very strange. Right. Yeah, that's kind of weird to do that. I mean, I know we're still trying to put in a transition there. We have put in transitions to almost every other scene. We have one for the yes. wall exiting. Uh, but the nice. one from going from, I mean, the graphics are so different when you're going from a sharp turn to the seawall. There's like, <laughs> there's no easy way to connect those. Uh, <laughs> Not really. Yeah, I guess so, maybe like a wall coming up on the right hand side. Maybe, yeah. Like just to, a... Yeah. I, I know Nathan's worked on that. Um, a scene like that, we'd have to pre render. So it would take um, a bunch of K right, right now where we're kind of throwing stuff against the wall at the end there. So I'm kind of low on ROM right now, believe it or not, even with 120 K. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I feel like I'm up for a challenge now. Oh, you are, huh? Yeah. Okay. Let's do the challenge. Darcy, when, when you choose the, uh, um, um, speed, um, you keep selecting slow, um, for the, um, palette change, which means oh. you're not really going to see a lot of, because of time of oh, day. I see. Day. So if you want to put on fast, gotcha. it might be better because that way people yep. can see. That's the, a good uh, idea. That would be good. That way, that that way you can see. There we go. Fast. There we go. And and how fast is the fast again? Um, it'll do a full day in six minutes. Oh, that yeah, yeah. so that'll be very quick. Yeah, That's well, cool. six minutes is actually a long time to play a game, but um, um, it's better than twenty-four minutes or twelve. So, um, oh, and this, yeah. in, when you're in the city, it actually shifts left and right, like the whole thing. That's oh, amazing. Yeah, if I didn't playing, even notice that. If you're playing advanced, advanced. If, if you ever play the arcade, um, the uh, scene. It's basically it's supposed to simulate a winding road, so it's not like you're just on a road that's going straight the entire time. It shifts back right. and forth. Um, unfortunately, um, with the, the play field resolution, we, it's a little chunky because that's do four pixels at a time. In the arcade, it's nice to spin out of one. Um, definitely adds to the challenge I, um, and makes it more arcade. We're definitely having had a, a time of day change there. Yeah. Yeah. Had so yeah, so we just went morning to uh, day. the day. So. Yeah, very nice. And this doesn't use flicker at all for the playfield area. No, this I, is using the. Uh, like. Yeah, I just talked about this two years ago. With uh, I can't believe yeah. it's been that long, but uh, yeah, so it's basically <laughs> using the um, technology hard. that Chris um, Walton um, devised for Xevious, um, which is a. Yep. You no, know, so it's basically using a combination of alternating background and. Playfield colors to give you four colors, um, and we split that between the top and the bottom. So basically, you're seeing eight different colors 
with, with, with no flickers, not with alternating them, with trying to blend them with anything fancy. So, yeah, I mean, it looks looks really nice without the without the flicker. That's for sure. Yep. Yeah. So, it was it was actually nice to develop because a lot of the games that I make, you know, they're not really well suited for the Atari. Like things like Zookeeper, where there's 16 things on, you know, that be jumping 60 <laughs> the animals. Same line. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. Regardless of you know, you can strap a Cray computer onto this thing. You still have to go for the PIA. <laughs> you still only have two independent sprites. So you know, no matter how much horsepower you throw at it, you're gonna you're always limited to that. So. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. so you have to work turbo. within the limitations. Exactly. So turbo, you still see, you'll see a little bit of flicker when there's more than two cars in the same van. But besides that, you know, there's really, there's really no flicker whatsoever. So which is, which is nice having. Absolutely the, gorgeous. Yeah, having, having the PF objects, so I de basically develop an entire engine that um, allows you to render those play field objects, what I call them, like the trees and stuff like that. So those can basically. Yeah. Right now, the base is moving, you know, with the track. You can technically have them spinning around if you want to, um, because so a, there's a. I'm sorry. There's, sorry, there's a question. Uh, I can't. Say? This screen is so small, and my <laughs> eyes are old. It says <laughs> not a good combo. It's a uh, WG double down. It says, uh, will the game time always be 99 seconds, or will it have the options for the arcade t uh, default times of 55, 60, 70, 80, 90? Ooh, I didn't know they had those, but um, for what? Um, uh -huh. we, we could add. But that. this isn't the arcade game. This is this something is a different, different game. Yeah, this is so different. What arcade <laughs> game are you referring to? Yeah. No, but so we'll, maybe, we'll run that maybe, joke into the ground. Maybe 56, <laughs> 60, uh, 1, uh, 72, 83, and 96. Okay, okay, that's those fine. I know. Um, <laughs> what what does happen is, and with every um different skill level is that even though it says time 99 it's not 99 seconds it's just 99 right. time units and it moves faster or slower based on what skill level you're on and then and just like the i think i saw this in arcade games um it actually moves a little bit yeah. faster for each round so round two the timer moves a little bit uh, faster and it, it tops off obviously oh, at some yeah. point because um you know at, it, it can't if it went you know super fast only gave you like five seconds to pass 30 cards awesome. but um, that's was, that'd be pretty hard yeah yeah so <laughs> so obviously um we did change some of the rules too um on round two um in the uh i played this arcade game i think it was called turbo and what happened in that game on round two whenever you crash you just explode we've added uh, in, yes uh, yeah we and which i never actually enjoyed i didn't like it in the arcade i didn't like it in this game so um, what, what we've changed is that you now have damage, quote unquote, that you don't actually see. But you know, if you crash on this, I mean, it'll explode now. But if you've, uh, it'll yeah. allow a few crashes. But the faster you're going, the more damage it does. So if you're going full tilt and you crash, you'll probably explode. Oh. But if you're going slow and you happen to tap a card, you know, it'll, it, it won't um, kill you right, 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 right away. But uh. Um, oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. And also, we also put one thing in there where in the arcade game after round two if you have 10 lives left you know you can only nine but let's say say you had nine <laughs> lives left and you didn't pass 30 cards in a lot of time the game just ends um which Ugh, I, which i was terrible so now what happens now is it'll yeah. say time expired retry level you basically have to retry the entire level but you lose a life oh so it's that's boom. very fair so yeah. i know it's a game you know it's basically you know, you can only get up to round two or three. Now, it's, now it gives you a little bit more of a chance to play the game, see more. Yeah. Stuff. And it gives you an opportunity to play the level that you need the effort to, to get better at. <laughs> yes, yes exactly. that's right. Yeah. yeah, it's it's like in games where there's bosses, and you just barely make it to the boss, and you have the life you have left, <laughs> and then you die immediately because you don't know his pattern, and it takes you an hour again to reset the game and do it to get back up to that. Sounds it's like, like you've been there oh uh, my God. a lot. Yeah, I have, and it's a terrible experience. <laughs> yeah. So that's, and and doing uh, these games for the 2600 gives the opportunity, gives you the opportunity to make the game how you want it, yep. and to make it a little bit more fair or different in, in a way that, that just couldn't be done in another platform exactly and that's uh you know that's kind of people are probably wondering why did i make all these ports was it wasn't because oh because i want to go to jail one day 
It was actually because, uh, you know, um, it's just because I really love making ports. You know, I, I'm an engineer before yeah. I'm a designer. It's that, that simple. Some people are game designers and some people aren't. And I'm, yeah. I happen to be an engineer who likes to look at a problem and say, how can I solve a problem? And to me, making these games on the 2600 is an engineering problem. That happens to have a pretty yeah. good uh, bonus of being an actual a game that you can play once you solve that problem. So, um, and you know, maybe I am a little creative because I do try to make these games different from the arcade. I'm going to say, okay, well, I'm going to take Turbo and I'm going to make it exactly the way it was in the arcade, so people have to play it on the Atari with less color and less resolution. That that, that just wouldn't yeah. make sense. So it's like, okay, well, how can we take this um, um, idea of driving a car through scenery, passing cars, it's really not uh, rocket science, and make this, you <laughs> yeah. know, make it so it's something that people want to play. And, uh, yeah. and of course, you and, know. And put your own twist on it as well. Like you, almost in almost every game that you've made for the 2600, you have added in an extra type of level or added in a second player when there was no second player in the game before as well. Right, yeah, exactly. Like co-op modes, um, you know, versus modes, um, additional enemies, and stuff like that. And again, hopefully this doesn't come off the side again, and that's why I did it. Um, this is basically, uh, you know, that's that's kind of what inspires me. And, you know, it's certainly, as far as what you've mentioned before, what's gray and what's black and white, I, in my yeah. eyes, it's black and white. You know, I, it's, you know, something that, you know, um, I don't own the rights to these games, and that's just... I'm not going to pretend like I do, and that's that's basically yeah. the end there. I mean, but with, with that said, it's like you know this is a, a very small niche um, market that you know just trying to make games that, and it's unfortunately the whole dynamic of developing homebrew games just changed over time. It's not like it was in 19, 2003 where hey, I want to make a port of XYZ. And, you know, retro yeah. gaming's dead, you know, it's not really a big scene. Um, you know, basically... Get any then, cartridge for a dollar. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, and we, we try to do, uh, um, you know, obscure games as well, just to bring them to, to light for people. And, uh, you know, it's, it's you know, I, I guess in, in hind, you know, hindsight, it's always twenty twenty. So I was like, hey, this game's great. And then as soon as, you know, something like this happens, like, well, why did you do it? It's like, oh... <laughs> for all the people that actually, how you could know, you do that 20 years ago john yeah, come exactly. on but you know it's it, 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 it's a difficult situation for sure i don't want to derail yeah. um the turbo discussion you know just since we are yeah. comparing it to the the arcade game you know and i yeah. have had a lot of people and, and reasonings and, yeah and i've had a yeah. lot of people reach out to me in the last couple of days and apologize to everyone because i really haven't responded to anyone because I, I knew i'd have this forum to uh, to discuss things um yeah. But, you know, so hopefully that, that answers some questions. And if we have other questions later, we can we'll, answer that. So we'll get into more questions. That's yes. for sure. Exactly. Let's let's, let's oh, move sorry. on to the controllers, the control okay. options, because you have added two more control options beside joystick to this. Yes. Um, so the first one, let's start with the driving controller. And I think that's going to make all the difference in the world for me. Well, it does say driving on it, so yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. So it's probably. Uh, just to be clear, I'm kidding. It's not going to make any difference to me. So yeah. it's going to it's going to be cool, but I'm going to crash may, just as much. Yeah. So like, that's not... my that's my. If I was able to bet on it, I would say I'm probably <laughs> going to crash just as much. Yeah. So I'm not only going to do that. I am going to um, add this to it. <laughs> With the All right. Pedal I have, controller. I have the same thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, and you can, if anybody doesn't know about the pedal controller, it has three buttons on it that are assignable to any of the joystick directions and the joystick button. So, what we can do is that the driving controller, well, we'll get into it, but we're going to assign these to the shift and also the acceleration button. Um, so, with the driving controller, the uh, shifting is up and down, if I remember correctly. With the yes, with the controller. Yes. yes. And down then we're going to go assign the uh, acceleration to, um, which is the button, to the yellow. So okay. that's shift down, shift up, and accelerate. 
So let's get this on the floor for you. James, do you have a splitter or do you have a... Um, like well, this has a built-in... Um, oh, it has a built-in splitter. Pass, exactly. pass through. Exactly. Yeah, so it'll work, work just fine. Yeah. And if anybody doesn't have one of these, this is an awesome, awesome thing to add to your collection because it works with literally any game because it doesn't care. It just emulates joystick directions. Oh, that's from this. Thank you. Okay, so let's turn it on, and it's going to give you the same option, I believe. So now you have to do something different. You have to turn the wheel for driving. Is it oh, plugged in? you know what? I discovered that you have to plug in the driving controller first, turn the wheel, and then plug in the foot pedal. Interesting. So I don't, I don't know if that's. Is fixable. that because of these it settings? It seems like it'd be fixable. Um, it could be because of the settings. So actually, let's try that out right now. And plug all this back in. Turn this back off. That's all the settings it, to pass through. Yeah, it should just be passing up and down through it, and it should be able to read that. So it's, that's a little weird, but I'll, I'll, I'll add that to my my testing list. Yes. Now, Darcy, even though it says driving controller, that's not wasn't designed, and Turbo is a racing game. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're a good match for control, believe it or not. Um, <laughs> because the, the driving yeah. controller was originally designed for. Um, Indy 500, which is a game where you have a car on the screen, you know, 2D, and it's to turn it around in a circle. You're obviously, oh, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. not doing that here. So basically, I had to take this, the driving controller, and you know, write code so that when you turn it to the left, it simulates a joystick move to the left, and turn it to the right. So it's, uh, there's definitely some. I, I think it plays pretty well, but it's not going to, you know, it's. It's not designed. Oh, oh, no. oh any the the problem with me playing the games is that you, you get limited feedback because I'm so terrible. Yes. That it's... <laughs> I can see that. I didn't touch anything. Uh, something interesting is happening. When I plug in nothing, the game turns on. But when the driving controller is plugged in. It, it either won't on. start, or when you plug it in when it's already on, it oh it goes, goes to blank. nothing. Yeah. You know what? Let me just try something. <laughs> now it's like oh you have a joystick immediately. Some more testing. Will be needed. There we go. Okay, we've got it going. Well, that, I was spinning it as you plugged it in. Or yes. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. So there's there's some there's some some, some troubleshooting problems. to be done I think some oddities with yeah some oddities with the driving controller where it's not booting or you boot it up with it on and it will go blank immediately like you can see the menu for a millisecond no, like it's... like one frame okay and and it goes away Interesting. so I'm gonna set this oh, back yeah it's funny I I think Nathan actually tested that last night and uh, he said it actually worked pretty well so let me uh. One demerit. It could and, be uh, that it could be something to do with, and it and it did work actually in the earlier builds I got today. Yeah, that's it weird. It did work. I certainly didn't change. But this it. one doesn't. That's weird. So, it's it's a little flaky. Yeah. It's probably that that we need dev to switch it to manual. Spread, so, <laughs> that's we need right. To switch it to manual. Definitely is. Oh yes. Uh, okay. Okay. Manual shift. There we go. Okay. So now the foot pedal is assigned to up and down, and the yellow. Uh, but now the uh, this is not working. I'm just going to go right in and make sure that I'm not okay. mistaken. But it doesn't seem to be working now. Yeah, it's not turning. Hmm. I'm not normally this bad. <laughs> Maybe it's my equipment. Oh, I'm doing pretty good. I got out of the city. <laughs> Let's just plug that directly in. Yeah. Let's see if that's... Hello, buddy. Try now. Yeah, it's work. It's it's working now. So. Uh... 
So this one is set to pass through, and this one is set to pass through. Yep. What's this one? I'm gonna put the joystick button back on that. Let's put it back all in again. Try and steer. Uh, the button is working though, because okay. I'm going faster. Try and steer now. Okay, now I can. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Yeah, there well, seems to be a. When you change gear, they posted a, um, that in the latest build, uh, the drive controller isn't working on his either. So. so. Oh, okay. Yeah, but okay. it was working. That's pretty it's, it's so, working. It's strange, so. We'll go to automatic then. We'll switch to we'll switch to automatic shifting then. It's working in that when you what did you oh you had to switch it to here. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we won't be using this. So it works without the pedal, anyways. Yes. It should. So we'll start it up. I gotta put it back to novice. Yes. <laughs> Press. <laughs> there you go. And arcade. Yep. And morning and fast. and fast there we go so now sorry for the delay people uh this is a work in progress as is you know this is live as well <laughs> but we've got it going so darcy is now using the um driving controller um ah! which kind of it I... had the driving controller has 16 different positions almost 16 uh yes yep i don't know settings uh that it cycles through um and you can only go through them at a certain rate so maybe you can explain how you how you translate that into the game yeah it's 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 um basically all all i'm doing is taking the last it's actually just a four bit quarter so there's actually only four values that yeah. it, it shows you i think the 16 is how many um clicks it'll do for an entire rotation but from a program oh, okay. standpoint, it's either, you know, it's only um, two bits, so it's zero 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 one one zero one one, not necessarily in that order. So basically, yeah. <laughs> all all we do on our end, well, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but basically, it's just say, well, what is, what is your current value, and if you turn left, then your next value would be this. If you turned it right, it would be that this value. But I know it's just by putting that in, basically, you have to turn the drive trolling. 10 times to get it to move across the screen. It's very jerky. So, so th this basically yeah. will get you going in that direction. And as long as you keep turning in that direction, it keeps you moving. Uh, in that direction. Okay. So it's, it kind of does like a buffer. Um, so it's. Oh, okay. It's okay. actually. It's, I, it, I think it actually works pretty well. Um, but. Um, yeah. It's, it's different than the joystick, but it's like. Yeah, it. It's, it's, it's different kind feel, of like right? change of resolution, you know, like you have to move more to move further and there's ups and downs to that. Like there are serious ups and serious downs to that, right? Like well, I think when I think once you get used to it, you have more control, like you have more finite control over where but you're going. It's a little slower. If you have to make a big movement, you're at a disadvantage, but like it helps you make the smaller movements uh, more easily. I I don't know how you feel about that or whether Yeah, that, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's really yeah. Unless I um, had it, so I think they're both playable. Is the point? Yeah, I think it's you know one option would be you, know, you could have, I could have the car move faster when you turn the wheel faster. But what I tried to do is have the range or the speed that your car moves to be the same no matter what controller you're using. Uh, so it's not yeah, yeah. so it's not okay. unfair because there's a lot of code like the sliding, the hydroplaning that all depends on your, the speed yeah. that you move left and right. So if I start doing things like, well, if you use the paddle, it's going to move this fast. If you use the driving control, it moves this yeah. fast. It gets very complicated. And what what I find is that I play with the joystick for a while um, and then uh, get used to it. And then I switch to paddles. And then it's, this is like a small learning curve. But then once you start learning using paddles, back to the driving control, and then that's that's difficult, but it, it's something that you get used to it because they all have a different feel. To yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you could have a setting so that you pick the size of your steering wheel, you pick a small steering wheel, oh, and you turn yeah. fast, and you pick a bigger steering wheel, and you turn slower. Yeah. And then you'll have more differences between that arcade game that is kind of similar. <laughs> I think they just had one big steering controller on the arcade. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of turning that has to be done with this. Yep. Um, other than that, I like the 
the precision of it. Yeah, yeah. It's, yes. it's like really, really precise. So you, it's really good for passing cars and like that you need to get by with a tight area. Well, yeah, when you want to like sneak through two cars. It's, yeah, it's yeah. really, really good. But to get from one side to the other, it requires like almost, like two full turns almost, which is quite an undertaking. Yeah, there's certain, uh, you know, obviously I, there's all the switches and uh, levers that I can turn on my end to make it I maybe think, a little yeah. bit more. It, it's kind of, I didn't want to have it where it's, because if I do that, then your precision will, will um, be less, you know, that's right. when you move slower. So it's like, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a fine balance, but it's certainly uh, something that's playable for sure. Yeah, no, it is very playable with this. So let's uh, switch over to the third option for controlling now, which is paddle control. Can you see if there's any uh, questions about control in there or any? Okay, you need to get away from that camera. <laughs> uh. Question: Can you really spin it fast, or will it miss pulses? Um, well, I would, you can't spin it fast because it doesn't have a ball bearing in it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, as fast as I yeah. spin it, I was spinning. I didn't see uh, lose any. Uh, yeah, I didn't feel any 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 missing that way. I don't think. But. There we go. It detected the paddles correctly by pressing the button on the paddle. So the detection is is the 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 ability to use the the controllers is very very easy. You just plug them in and press a button and they're ready to go. Yeah, so with the paddles, what I wanted to do is um, instead of having it change the uh, skill level if the paddles turn left or right, um, I didn't want that to happen because uh, it would, um, you know... You, you don't can... want absolute positioning? Boom, boom, yeah, exactly. boom, boom. <laughs> so the paddle is very, very different. So the paddle is, think of it as a steering wheel. And the reason I, there's reasons why I had to change it. Originally, what I when I first did, it, I did absolute positioning, like kaboom. It was awesome because it was very precise. <laughs> but basically, it was way too easy because you could just jump over cars. You know, obviously things yeah. like uh, sliding and friction and uh, you know puddles <laughs> Riff. Are, are completely nullified because what well, you slide to the left doesn't yeah. matter. You turn to the you know wherever your paddle What's is, it has, it has to go there. So. Um, yeah. Um, Meanwhile, the guy in the car is like smacking his head left and right as your car's whipping across the track. Yes. One thing I noticed is that uh, a car will leave the screen and then I catch up and it's there. And how Please. long in the future, how far does it remember the car ahead of you? Um, not too far. Because it seems because... to remember it off the screen a little bit. Yeah, it does. I put it so it goes for a while, but once it gets way ahead of you, you know, I don't want to have... Um, yeah, you know, there's only like four or five cars active at the same time. So once he's gone way ahead right. of you, then it'll it will spawn another one. So, but anyway, the the paddle controller this, is. Uh, I think this one is my favorite. Yeah. So so my second option yeah, yeah. for the paddles was to basically still use absolute positioning, but you would move the car would move to, to wherever ever your absolute position was. So for example, if you okay turned it, and it was like X equals you know. Or the hard zone. It's actually a lot like steering because with a st with steering a car, you don't keep turning the wheel to turn. You turn it a little bit and you hold it there until you want to stop turning that way, and then you turn yeah. it back. Yeah. So it's, no, it's, it's very this, similar. The paddle is actually very good. Like yeah. it, it felt very natural to me, and I started to like smash into things eventually. But when I first <laughs> left the thing, I did better than ever weaving through the cars. Which is probably just luck and coincidence. <laughs> yeah, but you've, you've kind of stolen my thunder. <laughs> because, uh, that, that was a third, uh, third option. I oh, oh. The, the, the second one was the absolute positioning. But again, once we added in the ice and the sliding and stuff like that, um, what would happen is when you started the hydroplane, the car would just go crazy because it was always trying to go to wherever your absolute position was, no matter what. Oh, um, yes. oh yeah. Right, so right. I went okay, and that actually I discovered that a couple days ago. Uh oh, we need to rewrite the pallet control, and that's where I went. <laughs> so, so now it is, as Darcy um, said, um, it's yeah. basically like a real steering wheel. So if you hold it straight, and if you look up top, there's actually a uh, arrow that shows whether you're pointing your steering wheel. Oh, that's handy. Okay. Um, okay. I think what we'll end up doing is um, eventually that was actually for the absolute positioning, but what I want to do now is uh, 
change it to a steering wheel icon so you can see it straight, uh, straight oh. and a little yep. to the left so that way you will see you know and it's very helpful like when you're actually starting like after you crash you say okay make sure my steering wheel is straight you look up to the icon so it tells uh, that's that's really cool. yeah yeah it's so, nice to have that like it's not like in your face but it's nice to have that feedback like when you're trying to troubleshoot like yeah exactly yeah. like yeah. if you're staring you look up and go hey it's, my steering wheel is pointing to the right a little bit but again what i want to do is uh I think there's like four different, um, well, there's nine different um, um, paddle positions that it's trying to read. You know, straight ahead, and then a little bit to the left, a little to the right, a little more, a little more. So you know, we could have, you know, I never asked Nathan to do this, but you know, at some point we could put a uh, um, icon there instead of the arrows. Um, yeah. Be able. And and that that's done in some flying games as well with the yoke. Um, yeah that like in 1942 for um the 7800 that was put in to show which way you're steering as well and it's 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 a cool add-on like you don't have to look at it but it's like a nice visual effect yeah exactly so um that's uh that's kind of what we do with paddle and the cool thing with the paddle is that since there's two paddles you can if you want to tap this, the second button actually toggles the shifting so it's um yes so what i do i found that I, i'm not a little hard How yeah What's that? <laughs> How well, do you do it? I well, couldn't. I, if, if you put I it on, it near my you, foot. If, yeah, if you put it on the floor, pointing up, you know, it's almost like a, a, a pedal. Of course, I don't recommend him do that yeah. because they're going to smash your paddle. <laughs> uh, what also, <laughs> what I ended up doing is that if you actually put it between your feet and like click your feet, oh. up, Dorothy, uh, Dorothy style for the <laughs> um, I yeah, find that no to be actually like much, much easier. Um, and of course, you all. You have other options where you can do a second controller. You can you can hook the um, what do you call it the uh, your um, foot uh, pedal foot to pedal. the second second controller, yeah. and it will read the, uh, yes. the the button just to um, to toggle and uh, the shift as well. That's so. probably what I would do. And would you be able to put like a, a joystick as well in yeah. the second port and yep. use the button on the joystick? Yeah. Yep, exactly. Or or another set of paddles if you wanted to. I don't know if I would want to do that. You can put a drive controller yeah. there, and if you press the drive controller button, it'll toggle the shift for you. Um, and if you're using a gamepad, I might as well mention, I did put gamepad support, and the only difference is that yes. the second button <laughs> will um, toggle your shift instead of, so if you're confused whether up or down uh, is... Uh, yeah, yeah. Because when I was doing the shifting, uh, I had I didn't have great you know joystick control. So like when I went to the side, sometimes I went the side up or down, and it would shift. Yeah. And I'm sure James wouldn't have the same uh, problem. <laughs> but but it, it is nice for it to not be up and down for me, anyways. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. So yeah. yeah. So I, I don't have as much trouble. But of course, you just like you practice, joysticks. and then you get better at it anyway. So that's yeah, that's not a big because it, it might be a problem for Tanya too, because she has trouble with eight-way joysticks as well. She accidentally puts presses up or down during pressing left or right when she doesn't mean to. Yeah, I don't I, have as much trouble. I was uh, considering having it so it'll only register a gear change if you're only pressing up and down, as opposed to up and left and yeah. down. So I think that might yeah, be better. Always trade-offs. Yeah, that. and that yeah, is it a trade-off be too because then you think you changed up and it wasn't quite straight, and then <laughs> then you're throwing yeah. your joystick across the room. And <laughs> yeah, and, and plus you can't, can't shift while you're turning. Um, yeah. So you yeah, disadvantage yeah. But if you had a um, gamepad, then you would never have to press just up and down. You'd be able to just tap the second button while you're steering, and that would just toggle your shift. Th this, is, this is definitely... I've gotten like used to this now. At first, I was like, oh, this feels floaty. But then you get used to it, and you're like, yeah, yeah, oh, no, no I'm totally exactly. fine with this. Yeah, yeah, it's really yeah, good. yeah I, I would yeah. say that about all the controls. Uh, you know, they all have their pluses and minuses. Yeah. But, yeah. It, like, the second game in for whatever control I happen to be testing, it always like, okay, that feels much better than it did the first time. It's like, because you're trying to... So you know, I have a... I have a non this game specific question. Why is this a driving paddle and that is a paddle? Well, if you noticed um, when you're using this one, yeah. it spins indefinitely. Oh, okay. And I got this it now. is kind of an absolute yeah. position. I did notice that and I thought, oh, I thought they stopped. <laughs> I guess I remember wrong. <laughs> now, now you, okay. you made in the notes that this doesn't yet have uh, Atari Vox support or Quadtari support. 
Um, what are the plans for that in terms of the Atari Vox? Are you going to put any voices in, or is it just for high scores? And yeah. also the Quad Atari, is there like two players? You can play the enemies? Or no, I was like going to... Some of that. You know, I was uh, sketching, you know, Nathan and I are eventually going to start this manual if we ever end up producing this game. <laughs> um, but yeah. just a controller option alone is going to be like an addend, you know, an appendix of like 12 pages. So... Um, oh, yeah. So... Um, <laughs> I'm gonna keep it a one-player game. That's what I decided. That way, it's always it's gonna be much easier to explain, and uh, uh, it'll keep that much more simpler. So, with that being said, yeah, um, it will support Quadtari, so you can have two controllers plugged in um, and a save key in your second controller. Like I said, you can use it to um, shift. Uh. You, can, you can use it to plug in your, you know, another pedal if you want, because um, it'll read those controls as well for like gas and shifting. So things like yep. using the paddle or the drive control, you don't have to hook it all into one. But um, with, with, with that said, it does also support, so the drive controller only uses up, down, and button. So if you, I have a splitter and I have the pedal on it. But if you have a splitter, you can actually hook a joystick up as well and you can move that. You know, caveat is you have to move it left and right to shift um, because up right. and down is already taken. So you can do that with just one port same thing with the paddle. Um, um, use a pass through, uh, and then you can use a joystick for your shifting. Or you can just, you know, again, I, I think the second paddle button for shifting is probably the best solution. Um, yeah, you know, because I it's think, going to be there. Like, it, you have another paddle. It's always attached. Yeah, so. exactly. I think so. what, what you could do is, some like, whether it's you or someone, you could, like, I ha I'm... Uh, for my birthday, I bought a 3D printer, which hasn't arrived yet, but I'm thinking that way. You could make, like, a little bracket, and then people could print a thing. Yes. Yeah, actually, where it's, like, it, made to, like, hold the two things together. Yeah, there's actually someone... And it would be, like, cheap as free. So. Yeah, there's someone on Atari or Facebook, I just saw it and commented on it, where they've made yeah. a coupler that actually holds a driving controller or a paddle and a joystick. It's, like, um, Tron yeah. or something like that. But we're yeah. actually um, in, in talks, again, if there's ever a physical version of this release... Um, we may actually be able to bundle that with the uh, with the game. So, if people are interested, yeah. or not bundle it, but yeah, and like sell as accessories. Like the ease of like sharing like models and what have you too makes it so that people could print it themselves. People could print, well, they might not have a printer, but they could get yeah. it printed. Oh yeah, there's so many That's ways true. for people to get something like that now. Assuming that you know, like it's an open. Yeah, you if know, they make it open, put but the it, STL it's such file. an easy yeah. thing to put together for somebody that can 3D model things. Like it just really is really easy to do that. Yeah. That probably that's where it would be. If people wanted it, it would be essentially free because someone would make a free one. Anyway, right. I don't know. I'm derailing things, <laughs> but it's just like a thought that uh, sometimes oh, I have ideas. Played. Nathan Nathan Strum <laughs> asked, uh, uh, "Lost my connection. Have you played the enhanced track yet?" No. Yeah, we yeah. The no, enhanced track haven't. will have like all the new stuff that we've done. Um, not that we oh, haven't well, done. We definitely should have already seen, but you know, is uh, no. You go to the arrow and press the button. Oh, yeah. it's really good. Oh, that's awesome. I I was like, oh, I can't change it, <laughs> but uh, the menu for people who want to know the paddle with the paddle. You wait for the arrow to come up, and then you press. Yes. The then you press the button to change it. Yeah, and the only reason so why, advanced. Or, or, yeah, the, yeah the, advanced. The, the reason why I did that is because if your paddle just happens to be turned to the left when you turn on the game, oh it's going to cycle through this things, is, this or is, even at, at yeah. the end, end of a game, you know, so it's like... Uh, it is very satisfying. That's yeah. That set of controls of the arrow, Yes. you're on the arrow, press the button, and it changes, and it, like it was, first time I had it, I was just like, oh, it was yeah. very satisfying. I've seen games I had no where it just fear that I was going to accidentally ah. press buttons. It was really good. Exactly. I, I really like it, yeah. So is it uh, advanced or is it enhanced? Or challenge, sorry. Advanced. Advanced or did, challenge. No, no. Did, do you mind switching uh, the picture back to the... I'm staring at my face, which is uh, <laughs> disconcerting. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no problem. There you go. You're talking again. Like you can ignore the mirror because I'm smart enough. <laughs> except, except like on 20 seconds delay. So you're like, ah, yes. oh, it's me from the past. Exactly. Ah. Um, yeah. So okay. all you see is regrets. Yeah, of the it's, past. Not, it's not advanced. <laughs> 10 seconds in the past. It's not advanced. No, 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 no. You it's not. Is it challenge? No, no. You got to back. Challenge out. or back out. Oh, okay. Okay. It can all be, the way it, to it can be any skill level. It doesn't have to be. It's not tied to the skill level. Oh, okay. Oh, 
Okay. So, so I can if you want on. to start with standard. Oh, it's, 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 okay, yeah. Standard. standard. Okay. And then you go here. Oh, yeah, there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We got it. Yeah, enhance, and then you can... I'm going to get my ass kicked. Yeah, and, and <laughs> change the, yeah, time of day is fast, which is the best thing. Yeah, he got fast and uh, started, I think, at night. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, which does look cool. Oh, yeah. So, do the uh, enemy cars sometimes crash? Because I thought I saw one yep. run into somebody else. Yeah. yeah. But I hadn't seen that. Yeah, they can and, run into yeah. each other, or they can run up. into the ambulance. Yeah, the ambulance will plow them over. Too, oh, yeah, so. one just crashed there, yeah. What I recommend Good. is once the ambulance goes past you, you can go behind them and he blocks for you. And, like, yeah. All the parts. Oh, yeah. yes, that's yeah. right. I forgot about that tactic. Oh, my God. Going too slow. Um, also, you can put the paddle on the ground upside down and kind of step on the paddle, yep, and it pushes. That's, that's yeah, everyone stomp on their paddles. I can. Uh, I can. <laughs> it's, it's not like I have enough a dime a dozen. to deal with. You know, it's like a class action lawsuit. <laughs> that's right. My paddle got destroyed because yep. of Turbo Arcade. Yeah. <laughs> I really. I, 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 got to, I, I, I haven't mentioned Nathan's name. Well, I've mentioned Nathan's name a few times, but uh, oh, you know, yes. certainly, uh, obviously, he is. Like the last, we've actually been rewriting the sync like three or four months, it seems like. Um, and uh, it's the time he spent rewriting all these graphics. And there's like 150 palettes we have now. Um, wow. It's, it's a painstaking job. And we still have that actual uh, um, cheat here. We can actually change the palettes in game if you wanted to. But uh, not that. Oh, but, cool. Yeah, not that I recommend you do that. But. Um, <laughs> you kind yeah. of get distracted, yeah. Yeah, it's always the first thing. It's not always the first awesome. thing to do. It's, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> working the pallets manually. And then I'm like, hey, can I have uh, something to do this or that? And then I end up, uh, you know, a little cheat where you can actually change the colors. Yeah. On and, the screen. A lot of these are... Yeah. A lot of these are for uh, bug testing, for just so you don't have to play the game to level 20, so you can advance. And, and sometimes you just leave them in. Yep. And, uh, you know, as a little bonus, if somebody discovers it eventually, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. And that was, that's been done for many, many years. Yeah. We did add it in. Uh, I was doing it after you crash, you flash for like a second, and you're invincible for that time because we didn't want yes. to be even fair. So and that's also after yes. you complete a round when it's doing its countdown, then just kick you right back in and have you, uh, um, you know, get, get, get killed. So. Yeah, it's always nice to have that couple seconds after you crash so you don't just, like, lose three lives in a row. Oh, my God, what? <laughs> uh, yeah. So anything else we need to explore in this uh, yeah. that we haven't? Yeah, there's still, a, there's still a rain scene and the desert. There's a, there's a bunch of new scenes that you kind of have to... And the, this is actually, you know, now it has turns in the tunnel. Um, it has turned into oh, snow yeah. as well. So uh, oh, again, once we had uh, rewritten all the, uh, all right, here's a here's an ice scene. Of course, we killed literally the second he got there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. I'll, I'll get there again. <laughs> <laughs> so the rain is in here. Uh, yeah. I just haven't seen it yet. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's again, make it to not, there, You're then. not gonna actually see rain careful. falling. That would have been. Uh, um, we may be able to squeak something yeah. like that in like, with the missiles or something like that, but um, for now, it's, yeah. Uh, it's just what it looks like, and there's actually a cool effect that uh, um, they can put in for, for the rain. So, uh, yeah. Um, Andrew Davies doing some pretty magical things with Playfield. Um, if you've been following his Wen Hop, and yes. oh my god. Yep. Yeah. Actually, yeah, I spoke with Andrew. It's amazing. Um, yeah, he yeah. he supports. Um, you know, he does his uh, um, renders his screens a little bit different, where he. Uh, yeah. Every uh, pixel is three scan lines high. I guess maybe I'm not yes. describing. And you cycle through red, blue, and green. Um, take yeah. up to eight colors. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's uh, a little bit different the way it's drawn. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Let's I actually I did, did a, did a proof of concept on, on my end where I just you know drew like eight. Uh, you know, a uh, play field pattern in a row and, and did that. It's kind of cool. You know, definitely gets pretty cool colors doing that. So um, this one is two line resolution. So there's some advantages, yeah. but obviously, uh, you know, we're limited to four colors as opposed to eight. And uh, 
you know, the yeah. wind hop looks looks amazing. Um, um, but certainly having to cycle through those three uh, colors does add a shimmer effect, similar to what I do in, uh, in Ladybug, Arcade, and Kicks, you know, where I uh, combine two lines every other frame to, you know, get rid of the scan lines. Yeah. But yeah, no, yeah. It's with the 2600, there's always a trade-off, no matter what you pick, right? Yeah, yeah, and that's something where the arm is, makes it possible to do some of that. You just couldn't. Not that it would be possible, but certainly having to change yeah. every single line, um, you know, cycle through every line, change colors, every line. You basically use all your uh, um, you know, processing time without the arm. So that's where you know now that Andrew's using the arm as well. That's where. Games like this are, are yeah. possible where you can cycle through those uh, very fast and uh, um, leverage yeah. or something like that. So. Oh, yeah, the arm has made available many games that weren't possible, at least in the way that they appear. Yeah, exactly. Uh, before. Yeah, yeah, certainly, like there's games like Ladybug, obviously, made that without the arm, but with the arm, I was able yep. to do asymmetrical doors or, you know, combine the colors to get make the color of the maids look better or. You know, and certainly all the extra RAM and ROM makes it possible to uh, yeah. put in all the cool uh, other features too. So. Yeah. Oh my God, I'm doing much terrible, much more terrible now that I'm actually. Oh, I gotta make it to the next scene. <laughs> crashing into every car. Are you still using and the of paddle? Cars are crashing. Yeah, still using paddle. I'm totally used to it now. Yeah. Um, of course, cars are crashing into other cars, and, and then they send that crashed car careening into me. Yeah. I'm like, thanks, God. And now you have the ambulance. I don't think you're going to make it. Yeah. I, <laughs> uh, probably six not seconds. two seconds. Oh, you might. No. No. Nine. <laughs> Almost. Oh, you had three. Give it one more go. Oh. <laughs> close. So close. So. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should have put the uh, new scene up front. <laughs> That's right. There is actually a way to skip just through scenes. Re um, it, it, I put a oh, cheat okay. in there, but if you're, I know it's just something that we did for developers. Um, and, and, uh, yep. Um, so right. if you use it, like you just start pounding on the thing, I know uh, you can crash the game doing it because what will happen if you do it like in the middle of the hill while things are starting to render, you know, it puts it yeah. in state. But if, like, if you're running the scene and you put hold the button and press select, it'll skip to the next scene. So it'll end the scene immediately. Okay. But you have to make sure that the scene is at least started. Um, because if you do it like, uh, see, like you just hit it twice, so now you have a half the hill there. So, um, okay. but, it, but you didn't crash it, even though you tried. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I did try. So anyway, so that's, Very hard that's kind of why I do it. It's easier when you're debugging. Oh, there we go. Yeah. It's easier when, when you're debugging because, you know, I'm sitting at the keyboard. You see how you had like, uh, the um, objects like on the seawall, something like that, so because it didn't have a chance to roll yeah. off. So, so yeah, so you, you'll probably see some weird stuff, but yeah, if you, if you push okay, your luck. So just tell me when to do it. Uh, now. Oh, you, what did you press? I pressed game select. Oh, weird. End the game. No, <laughs> well, were you supposed okay. to hold the button down the whole time? Oh, yes, okay, I <laughs> didn't hold the button down. Okay, let's, let's go, okay. Or, James, you can just <laughs> get better. I, I could down. get better. That's yeah. an option. Uh, yep, I got the button down. <laughs> and then I press. Yep, one at a time, not too fast. Yes, yeah, so Nathan says, talk less, play more. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, that does distract me when I'm talking. Okay. Careful. Not too much. <laughs> not too much. Yeah, you still have to make the time, though, because you're still going to be running out of time. Okay. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Because I have to hold the button now. Okay. Uh, no. Okay, wait. Jesus. Oof. You're pushing your luck. I see a lot of glitches. <laughs> it's not too bad. Okay. Uh... Okay, that's probably good. Now, now just rely on your uh, your skills. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll try. Of course, you, <laughs> you, you are running out of time, though, so. Yeah. That, that is an issue. What's going to happen? It, it, Darcy it, was distracting me. Yeah, you, you, it was my fault. You're going to get to the scene, fault. but you're going to run out of time. I should have had a. Uh, <laughs> I should put in a fix. I, um, wait, infinite disable, time. Disable the timer right, exactly. I forgot. Infinite lives, infinite yeah. time. The cars are definitely uh, behaving 
in a more difficult fashion here. They are. Yeah. Evil, evil cars. Seventeen. Oh, I'm we not made it. Make it. To the ice. Did you pass enough cars? No, that, 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 that's no. just snow. Oh, just snow. Okay. Yeah. It has to go through another tunnel to get the ice. <laughs> you can always play a novice. A novice. Um, I could. Aiden said novice. Aren't you a novice? Oh, no, I guess I'm not. I'm, not. I'm on standard. Yeah. Nathan said novice is extremely easy. There's no need to be hurtful, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> no, Did he emphasize to... extremely? Can you watch for um, questions? <laughs> okay, well, let's do this. Poor Darcy can't read. I can re totally read. <laughs> Reading is not an issue for me. It's the distance. It's the eyes. You need a bionic upgrade. So I got... Uh, Okay, trying so to get see. through this so I can open up a package I got today uh, uh -oh. that is related to Mr. Shampoo there. It's from me? James Mode. It's it's not from you, but it's related to you. Huh? But it is from you. Essentially from you. It's related to me, so it's, it's is it my brother Paul? <laughs> it's a small package, so it's a bit of your brother Paul. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. An ear with a ransom note? He was in charge. Uh, they're demanding. <laughs> they're demanding ten dollars because they know that oh. that's all they're gonna get. Okay, I'll stop making ports. <laughs> Please don't don't kill my family. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> uh, I noticed at one point you could see the number of cars that you had, but I don't see any now. Oh no, really? That's be it, no, because it doesn't oh, show. Oh, that's after. This is your qualifying round, so you don't have any uh, cars. Oh, you have, to, you you have, have infinite the, cars. Yeah, so once you do this, um, if you can pass 30 cars. Which also, gotcha. I was I'm thinking of there. putting in a mode um, called time mode, where it would be easier, where the second you pass 30 cars, the level ends. And then you get uh, you get a bonus uh, for whatever time is left. So it would be a different... Um, you get nine seconds, you got like two cards to pass. Okay. Uh, I got it. Uh, Slow yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now we He's can good. see some scenes. We'll get there now. He's good. Yeah. This is enhanced. Novice is my speed. Yep, yeah, it's enhanced. Okay. Yep. I need to have an indicator so on the screen. Oh. Yeah, Nate? color, a different color of something. The yeah. round, maybe. Ah! And that's also good for high score uh, competitions. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna um, throw that in there too. Um, yeah, um, we literally just, I did this enhanced map this morning, so apologies ahead of time <laughs> if there's any glitches. I think there's a glitch right, no right here. No apologies necessary. Yeah, a little glitch right there. Yeah. Uh, no. 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 <laughs> no. Okay, good. It's, it. it must be oh. so subtle that only I'm gonna you know, see it. So it, yeah. Oh. The the yeah the the only the artist can see it you know like when I make a movie it's like oh did you see that it's like no yeah there's a frame drop it's like okay <laughs> yeah you see so so now he's on round two you see he has two lives remaining and you do get a free life for every time huh. you complete a round yeah. oh nice yeah you can okay, see now the tail this, lights now. I think th th this is ice so it puts oh the left. lightning oh yeah you can see the lights off the ground. I There's see, lightning yeah. in the sky. Oh my yeah. god, that's awesome. Yeah. And more um, more water on the ground. Oh, this is so cool. Uh, it's, it's because the roads are wet. Steer. That's why you can see the reflection? That's it's, really cool. It's really hard to steer now. Oh, because of the rain. Yeah. Everything is a puddle. 100% puddle. Yeah, so, yeah. so here Maybe we have that cool effect where we had the uh, reflection of the cars, which is neat. Yeah. Uh, Obviously, uh, okay. Yeah, that was really cool. You get yeah. some thunder in there. Um, there, there, so awesome. there are more puddles, so I thought I extended this, yep. but I guess not. Um. You know, the reflections on the road were there for a while. Yep, yeah, they were. It, it looked really cool. Oh, that's good. Yeah, obviously, you know, Nathan and I are going to, we're going to do a, a better enhanced map, and then if we have room, we plan on putting on a few more maps if we can. It take up, you know, they, nice. they, they, they take oh, a little... Yay. Well, the, uh -oh. the ambulance is different in the in the desert. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah, it's a we, desert ambulance. We, we took that from Nash. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice. I was going to say, it looks camouflaged. Like, they don't want anyone to see them, but they're <laughs> right. what the sirens on? <laughs> what's on. What's on the road that I keep running into in uh, the cars. desert? 
cars. No, they're like things Is that it are tumbleweed? just yeah, they're still on the ground. No, it's rocks. Like, they're like rocks. Oh, oh. they're so yeah. fast, I can't even see them. Yeah, well, the rocks, but they're, you... they're actually not moving. So if you're going 100 miles an hour, they're coming to you 100 miles an hour. So um, yeah, but um, a tip on the rocks, they only uh, um, appear on the left, the far edges of the road. So if you stay in the middle, you oh. Oh, thank you. Well, yeah, we we had to put in something different. So um, that's true. It is something different. I was, but it it's more like water. It doesn't really it doesn't slow you down completely. It doesn't kill you. It just kind of makes you go a bit hmm. wonky for a second. Yeah, exactly. It, it does throw you in a little bit too. So hey, you see the, the the maces in the back. I'm dead. That was a cool scene. Yes. Oh yeah. Yep. Really, yep. really nice. Great. Oh, oh I still. Have, okay, now yeah, you got time expired. Sorry. Now, now you can see. So now you get to restart the uh, round and you've lost a life. Yeah, and the number of cars that I have to pass is reset as well. Yes, so exactly. It the really does level. reset the completely. Yeah. Yeah. Which I think Which is, is better than just fair. game over. You yep. have to have nine people. Oh, nine, nine it's way charged. better, way better. Yeah, yeah. 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 That, that is, it's more fun. Oh, yeah. we're we actually, in the daytime we have, desert. We, we have two different kind of cacti. And according to Nathan, yeah. that short one is called a barrel cactus. Which uh, 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 someone's been watching the Nature Channel so much, but uh, um, <laughs> I think it's uh, I think it's really cool that rock. So, and definitely the uh, drawing. If you notice, there, there's a little bit of uh, dirt kicking up with your tires, um, and also um, the stand itself has different. Um, you accelerate a little bit slower to start, and uh, it'll uh, um, you do drift a little bit when you're. Um, approaching max speed so um nathan's really into rally um, racing so he's he basically explained right. how it's supposed to control we, we didn't want to be like too realistic oh. but you know certainly enough so it's different so yeah oh, the desert kicked my ass quite badly oh i'm almost at the end yeah and you only need like two more cars slow yay Wait, you get it. Well, if you crash, okay, keep it there. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the rain and the uh, desert scene are the two new ones. Yes, and, and the ice scene. Uh, I don't know if you saw the, the ice okay. scene was pretty short, but uh, um, yeah. So there's uh, you also have a rain city. Um, um, yeah. So in the ice, if you like steer to the right, you actually move the entire length of the screen until you counter steer. So as opposed to oh, uh, as opposed to snow, okay. where you just skid a little bit. And then the rain, you also just hydroplane at a slower at a um, at slower speed as well. So um, yeah, yeah. So we tried to make it not too realistic. Again, it's not we're not going for a <laughs> champ sports racing here, but uh, that's right. Um, it's a video game. <laughs> yeah. So uh, oh, there's the reflections. I'm on the ice now. Oh, so yeah. Cool. So, so so if you press to the right, it should just kind of like if I don't crash. But I have one more life, so I can test it. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I thought the reflection uh, made, yeah. obviously came up with that. It was uh, really kind of cool to put it. So. Yeah, it's it's like the colors of your car, but a little faded. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, really, it's really, really nicely done. Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah, it's shown on every other frame to really give it that good effect. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah so, yeah, up. so anyway, yeah, I, so obviously, you know, from two years ago, this has come up. A long, long way. It's basically been rewritten, and uh, obviously we're trying yes. to pack in as many features as we can, so you know, we get to the point where you know people can uh, can purchase it. We'll, uh, we'll see. That's a little bit yeah. Yep. Yeah. So. Yeah. S. Ramirez says, "I can see myself playing this one for hours." Yeah, especially a novice. It's a very hypnotic thing. It's it's like it's it's really. A lot easier on novice. Like it's a big jump between novice and standard. standard. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I think novice, standard is like okay, that's a challenge. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then advance and challenge when you start to have the road winding where it shifts back and forth. It's uh, it definitely becomes a yeah. This is definitely yeah. a game where you know, any type of skill level for a person is, is uh, accommodated. Where if you're just yeah. wanna, like you said, if you just want to drive around looking scenery. Play novice if you want yeah. <laughs> to, you know, really battle these uh, opponents and uh, you know, push yourself to win. Play challenge, you know, it's like that. So, yeah. Gam uh, S. Ramirez uh, says you could add uh, 
a roadrunner to the desert scene instead of the ambulance running running off the screen. <laughs> yeah. That'd be funny. <laughs> That's funny. Have him go meet me. Excellent. Okay. I think uh, anything else before we leave no. the game? No, I think that's it. I mean, let me just go through the thing. Controller options, scenes, mining roads. Yeah, no, I think uh, I think we've basically uh, touched upon everything. Awesome. Um, so let's uh, open up the box I have here. A box. What's in the box? What's in the box? That's right. What is in the box? I don't think oh, I can I see. switch. Let's see. Oh, I can. With the cat cam. There we go. There's, there's the cat. Okay, let's open up the box <laughs> on the cat cam oh. here. Uh huh. Who's this from? It's from, it's from Atari Age. Uh oh. Uh oh. Cease and desist from Atari Age. Please stop doing your show. Yeah. With our with our games in it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's packing peanuts. Everything I always wanted. Oh, good. I only have like oh, six. Oh, you're number one. Six bags. Of them. You're number one this time. <laughs> okay. And they're getting everywhere. Of course. Anything else? Oh, I was going to say no stickers, Al. But no, we got stickers. No. Nice. I can uh, almost cover a whole room in these stickers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There you I go. Almost got enough. Then I can start on the ceiling. Until you do it, it's just words. <laughs> That's right. Okay. It looks like a game box. Let's see. I think it is a contraband arcade ports. Someone said that. I think it is. Gamma oh. Dev said that. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Contraband. Yeah. How did this get across the border? Obviously the uh, obviously the timing of this is a little uh, <laughs> a little, a little, uh, little awkward, but uh, no. awkward or ironic. Yeah. You know. Probably a little both. You go that way. Yeah. There we go. Anybody guess what it is? Probably not. What is this? This is crazy. It says Galaga on it. <laughs> oh my god. There it Galaga is. Galaga on the back. This is the first time I'm seeing it. Looks good. Yeah, it looks really nice. <laughs> Let's open it up. See how far somebody took this in renaming this. Yeah, the uh, IP holders of Galagon sued me, so I had to change it to something else. <laughs> well, it's, a, it's kind of a cool name, Galaga, instead of Galagon. Yeah. Kind of works. Still sounds like a dishwasher detergent. But, yeah. Um... <laughs> yeah, some obscure company, Champ Programming, made a game called Galagon back in the 90s. And uh, the guy got a hold of me. Uh, yeah, for DOS, right? Yep, yep. And the guy, uh, he, he got a hold of me and he said, she changed the name, so here we are. His name was... J Shampoo or John C or something, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Galaga on the cartridge. There's even a manual. Yeah, so people oh, understand wow. what went went here is when we initially developed Galaga back in the day, Dave Drys, who did the uh, um, artwork, um, amazing artwork, I should say, had already done the Galaga um, artwork. Um, before we decided that we should change the name to avoid something like this happening. <laughs> um, right. So really, this is the first edition of the game. Yes, exactly. So, um, so since we had the uh, assets, we decided that hey, let's print a small run of these and give them as gifts to the people that contribute to the game, which you'll see in the back there. So, um, and, oh, okay. and some other people as well that. Uh, so I think there were like seven or eight of them given away. There it is. Uh, code and design, John Shampo. So you'll be getting one eventually. I, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. According to uh, Al, I think he actually mailed it to me. 
should be here. Today. Graphics and design, Nathan Strum. Music and sound effects, Ross uh, Keenum. Packaging and design, Dave Dries. Game testing, some guy, uh, Steve Ramirez. Uh, can't read that last one. Through my webcam. Uh, Glenn, Glenn, great offender. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Exactly. So. Very nice. That's it. And uh, I don't know if people, I don't know if Al's actually announced it, but he was planning on, he, I think he had like 30 extra copies he was going to sell in the store, but it was interesting before it oh, all nice. shut down. So. I don't know. If it's so these will there. be actually listed, listed in the store. I think so. Uh, don't quote me on that. I'm pretty sure that was just okay. Cool. Um, hopefully, I'm Al. That's what that. you were thinking. But luckily, Al is on vacation <laughs> and not watching this. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. But yeah, I, I know. Watching I know it in had, the car. I know he had <laughs> a, probably like 30 he wants to uh, sell before everything shuts down. So uh, if people are interested, yeah, they'll. Again, it's just it's the so, coolest like the Ladybug Collector's Editions. The game itself is exactly right. the same except for the title screen. So there was no, they no real. All the effort was really done by uh, um, Dave Dries and Nathan actually Dries, yeah. contributed by uh, not only with help with design but also I think he's the one that modified the manual and a few other things too. Uh, and of course, he did the in-game logo for Galaga and Galaga. So. Yeah, it looks absolutely beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Yep. So So thank you, Alan. Thank you, John, for that uh, lovely gift. Uh, I, I remember you talking about it like years and years and years and years ago. Yes, that, that was and originally so. supposed to be taken care of in 2019. And then Al lost the yeah. boxes. One thing went to another. <laughs> and he finally found the boxes a few months ago and said, okay, well, while I have them, I'm going to send them out. <laughs> Um, that makes sense. Yeah. Russ says I need a new T-shirt now. So, yeah, this is this is the old name. Yeah, that, exactly. Uh, the infringing name. <laughs> yeah, the infringing one. I got to burn this one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, obviously, uh, uh, the game looks absolutely uh, astounding. Turbo. It's really fun to play. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. Um, with the multiple inputs and, of course, the pedal as well. There's so many options. Like you said, you're going to have to make half the manual <laughs> just for the control options. Yeah, we're going to try to make it as simple as possible, but yeah. But anyway, thanks thanks to you and Darcy for playing it. Hopefully, uh, it looked like you were having fun. So that's, uh, oh, yeah. it was tons yeah, of fun. fun. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I like the old version. This, this one looks so good. Yeah. With the th 60 frames per second and all the enhanced All the screens. enhanced stuff was really cool, yeah. 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 Excellent, good. No uh, mind link support, though. <laughs> Not yet. <It's> <laughs> mind link support. So left, Nathan, Nathan right, says, no left. Mind link support. Oh, God, I crashed. Oh, yeah. my brain. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so let's let's get to the the the, the other stuff now. <laughs> okay, yeah, uh, I know I touched fine. It's not as fun. fun. So. No, but it's yeah. something that has to be uh, addressed eventually. So, so um, maybe just step us through from your end how this all came about, as much as you can talk about, like when you found out and and um, the when the carts when the games will be removed and well, we all, all know that that's public J July twenty third, and your plans for and your future plans for distributing your games getting your games out there right because you already you do have digital distribution right now so that that is something that already exists but yeah. yeah so step us through what happened from your end yeah well yeah from my end certainly uh first before anyone you know just to set the record straight it's uh you know i've i was i, I was aware from the 1990s when you know, i started writing ports out uh, there's always a possibility so it's just the uh you know you're playing with fire to a lack of a you know better word, even though it's not really fire, because you know it's an obscure yeah. platform. You know it's very small yeah. number of sales. You know so forty five years old. Now. Yeah, so <laughs> it's it's a risk versus reward kind of thing. So um, so yeah. So was I shocked? No, absolutely not. I was a little shocked that yeah. all the games were being pulled, but um, yeah. even uh, you know Al, you know I think 
Bob and I, Bob Pacman Plus, are in a unique situation as far as other, you know, versus other homebrew authors. Now, you know, I'm consistently releasing games, so every year I'm having a talk with Al about this. You know, as opposed to someone who's releasing yeah. a game every five, six years, it's like, hey, what happened? You know, it's like, well, you no, know, you know, Al, Al is obviously running his, his site, and he's he's front lines. He's he's front line to the company. He's front line to the lawyers. He's front line to, uh, you know, the, the risks involved. So. You know, so he just made it clear that you know at some point, you know he he wants to, and he basically said said it in his uh, his message to the community that, you know, to make his, you know, I, I kind of look at it as we're a victim of our own success. Is that, uh, you know, Atari age twenty years ago, who really gave a crap about it? You know, it was like, I mean, we did, but it's such a small niche market. You know, no one really knows about it. You're making a few games. You know, back then it was basically, hey, I made this game. I wanted to write a port, X, Y, Z. Yeah. Is that a plan? A handful of people will buy it. A uh, truck going by. <laughs> okay. Yeah, exactly. So it was like uh, Al's like, hey, you know, I can make you cartridge, you know, and I sell it in the store for 20 bucks, you know, blah, blah, blah. And that's, and yeah. that's basically balloon. I think we all kind of got, I wouldn't say carried away with it. It's just, you know, passion is uh, infectious, right? It's like, you know, Al, Al, the quality that he released, you know, of yeah. the games, you know, people, it kind of just became its own thing. And it grew to a certain point where, you know, I don't know why Al had to do what he did, but, you know, we can all, we can all guess that, you know, it's obviously getting pressure from something or someone. Yeah. And yeah, if he doesn't make that move, you know, he could lose everything. So. Certainly, there's nobody no, wants that yeah, at no, all. There's no nobody anger on my that. end. There's obviously just a point. No, out, but you know, we all have that. So, yeah. so yeah. So, so it's basically just um, Al reached out to me on Tuesday, or Monday, or whatever. Not just me. Sent it to all developers affected. Basically said all games that um, um, borrow any type of um, IP uh, protected asset, whether that be sound graphics um the name itself game, uh, not gameplay but you know story yeah artwork whatever needs to be removed and uh yeah. that he was going to have this final sale so that's uh it's really it's really kind of how it happened and there's really not much else besides that I, like i didn't get any other different discussion um from al except that obviously i'm working on turbo and elevator action which are both 95 percent um done and there was a plan to release yeah. them at PRG, at least there was. So, you know, yeah. he just reached out and basically said that, you know, if I'm still interested in doing something like that, you know, he would assist me in doing it myself. Uh, so now the question is, do I want to become a self publisher? And so, right. so I'm not sure what's going to go on there. Um, my first inclination is I probably will at least do that. Um, yeah. You know, cause there's no, um, I don't want to get into the legal aspect of anything, but there's no one telling me that I can't make the games. I don't, and certainly no one reached out to Al. So I'm going to guess that it wasn't a class action, 40 companies saying, take all these games out. You know, he's taking them out yeah. because he wants to change the direction and um, what Atari H, um, provides to the community. You know, he wants to have it. So it's all licensed games and original games. And yep. to that it becomes and there more... and there are licensed games yeah exactly. there are, there's your... load runner and boulder dash and mm -hmm. you know pr probably a couple others that I, I that are not as high profile that i don't know about but exactly so yeah so that's that's just a difference so he's my publisher and the publisher is changing their um mission statement basically not that he had a mission yeah. statement to say we're gonna you know <laughs> yeah so um i've been <laughs> yeah. infringing software but it's just like i said he's gotten too big the scene has gotten too big and it's uh something yeah. that you know he needs to do to keep for his livelihood and uh you know so that's how things have changed so as far as what i'm going to be doing like i said like there hasn't been any specific you know c and d or anything like you got to stop doing this so because honestly yeah. i think that 90 percent of these companies could probably care less but that doesn't change the fact that, you know, Al needs, if he wants a legitimate business and he's whatever his dealings he's doing, he can't have anything yeah. that's, you know, it's like 
you're not gonna let me watch your kids if you know I'm dealing drugs. You know, it's like, it's like, <laughs> and yeah. I'm not, yeah, I'm not gonna compare the two, but it's the same thing. It's like, you know, yeah. if he wants to venture out, and become a legitimate business, they're gonna say, well, you're selling a licensed game. So, you know, so that's a stain on yeah. Atari age and something that um, he needs to, he needs to change. So, yeah. luckily for me, and that makes have, a lot of sense. Yeah, I personally don't have that um, reaction. Um, so, um, and I know at least the scenes. I like I said, you've seen the, the community react, and I think half of it has yeah. been disappointment. Another half has been, "I told you so," you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, but, you know, but so, the the good thing is nobody's nobody's blaming Al for doing this. That's yes. that's what I've not noticed. They're not like you should be carrying these games and carry the torch and fight again. No, nobody, not one person I've seen say that, which is. Which is good. Nobody blames Al for doing this whatsoever. Yeah, and why should they? Exactly. And yeah. and just to be clear, you know, Al and myself, and I'm sure all developers, even Bob, uh, definitely Bob, mm -hmm. and yeah. other developers, you know, there's nothing that we would want more than to have these licensed games. And the fact is, is that, you know, you have some um, IPs like Boulder Dash and Load Runner that are smaller IPs that are run by smaller companies where yeah. they'll talk to you. You know, that's step one. They'll talk to you yeah. and they'll say, hey, this is good for our image. You know, this is something we can do. It's, you know, it's, it's something that benefits us. But, you know, some games, you know, whatever, uh, Namco, whatever, you know, they're not going to, you know, I've reached out to them. We, we've had people reach out to these companies and they just don't want to yeah. even talk to you because in their mind, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. And um, so, right. it's, 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 you know, it's, they, they like I've, I've heard it before where they they people have said they would have to spend more money than they would ever get in return on yes. lawyers to draft up, you know, the letters and, you know, handle assign somebody to handle. Uh, we're looking after these homebrew carts and getting the money from Atari age. And they just go, why? Why would we even consider yes. that? Yeah. And I'm sure it, they have a similar approach to, you know, they look at this hobby and you know there is i'm not i'm gonna I'm trying to paint a good picture here but you know there is yeah. very positive and um what do you call it free marketing for the games believe it or not i mean sure we sell a couple of copies of the 2600 but that makes galaga you know i've heard many people say we've never even heard of zookeeper before what's mappy blah 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 this first time they're actually enjoying these games and then they, exactly you know, they that, i'm in that camp too before when you started developing them um, i'm like I didn't know Zookeeper. Like, it's not a common game to see in the in an arcade. Um, but I played it and went, "Oh my god, this is such an awesome game!" And it, and it, you know, exposes the game to a lot of people. Um, so that that's part yeah. of that gray again, area hope... where you can you can agree yeah, that exactly. it so, does help in some ways. Yeah, and again, yeah, so, and, and I know I said at the beginning of this that it's black and white. It is black and white. It's, it's definitely you know, yeah, it's not it a part of me that is believes that you know i have a legal case against these anyone that would say that you know they, they you know this is their ip no it's not blah blah, blah. I, I know it is yeah um but to, to that point it's like you know it's a small niche company you know, it's a small niche group and uh like i said you know this yeah. is why this is why i i do ports of games is because i want to bring a game to a very small group of people that i think they'll they'll enjoy it and it's not like we're trying to sell this on Xbox or something like that, sell millions of copies where, you know, yeah. trying to put these, you know. <laughs> so, again, I know it sounds like I'm trying to make excuses, but it's certainly not. Now, what we're doing is so people are going to ask, why did you do it? And that's this, this is why, you know. it's And people ask, you know, why haven't I made or why I want to make an original game? And bottom line is, and I said that before, is I'm a game programmer, not a game developer. And, and people may right. not understand what the difference is there. Um, and I'm, I'm an engineer yep. too, so my yep. half of what draws me to these games is how am I going to do it on the 2600? Not, you know, yeah. I want to make a game where you know it's all these levels and different uh, power ups and all these things. You know, I don't, I don't have the creativity to do that. So, and maybe I yep. do. But so the reality is, yeah, the so one the, game the, I designed you know, when I was 12, you know, four, four right. years Ma later, Mountain still not made or something. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's, it hasn't been made for a reason. It's not because I don't want to make it. So Nathan and I have yeah. started. So believe it or not. So. Yes. Nice. Nice. 
Yeah. Um, and it, yeah, it's for the love, it's for the challenge and it's for the love of the game. A lot of these games you ported because you loved them as a kid and you wanted to see them a good version of it on, on the system. Yes, exactly. It's, it's really as simple as that. So, and yeah. you know, and with the thought being that, you know, you're really not doing any harm to these companies. Are you infringing no. upon their IP? Absolutely. Are you harming yeah. the company? I don't, I personally don't think so. If anything, I don't know, think so either. If anything, we're, we're actually helping them, but you know, that's yeah, you're definitely but, helping them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. but they're, they're not gonna, but that's in our opinion, not their opinion. No, yeah, but it, it, right. it, it's not, yeah. it's somewhere along the way, it's not about that because uh, you, you're giving them you're giving them positive a positive image there's nothing negative about what you're doing to their image uh so there's some other there's something else going on like yeah. like some legal reasons or whatever like yeah, yeah. obviously yeah. in a perfect world you know i'd call namco and say hey i want to make a copy or you know i want to make a version of galaga it's going to be good for you it's going to be good for me what do you think yeah go yeah. ahead you know and here we yeah. go everyone and wins but the reality is like you said it's going to cost them more money to draft up a you know an agreement a license agreement with me than they'll ever see yeah so at that point and, you're and like, thomas and thomas said licensing is costly in the game the games will become more expensive and yeah exactly. maybe priced out of what anybody would even buy so yeah, it's it's yeah. an impossibility to have this happen exactly to license them exactly unless you find a comp a game like a load runner or boulder dash that has yeah. you know that's run by a smaller company that sees the benefit yeah. of having that game exposed to a different group on a different platform you know that's 50 yeah. years you know approaching 50 years old you know that, that that's a hard sell but <laughs> some people like if i worked yeah. at namco and i happen to be their licensed guy and someone reached out to me and said it and i'm a i love the 2600 i would actually probably you know give it a, a thought and say hey this would actually be kind of cool you know like how they brought halo to the 2600 you know they happen to have the connection yeah. so microsoft's that's like true. hey go for it and guess what? Microsoft looks good in that situation. People appreciate yeah. the game. It's a bestseller on the 2600, and I'm sure it's, it maybe yeah. even made them a few Halo fans along the way. Did they make any money off of it? Yeah. No. But did they no. make? Good, did <laughs> no. they make? Did they make goodwill off of it? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. and and that that brings up a point that none of us are making any money in this community. No. <laughs> and this is all a hobby. Uh, like we're making a few cents an hour <laughs> like yeah, even it, doing the show with the donations i do just hundreds of hours a year and it's just it's for the love of it i mean yeah, well, i can good. buy cat treats i can <laughs> buy cat treats with the with the money that people yeah. donate and i and i love it it's it's fun you know having having doing this show and i'm sure it's a lot of fun programming and putting the games out so it is it is for the love of this and it, that's not their concern is the money we're not making any money doing this. right yeah and, it, and it's and so to, small exactly and to darcy's point it's that they you know I, i'm not blaming these companies at all hopefully it doesn't sound like that either yeah. i wish yeah, they yeah. would see things different yeah. but i see why they see it the way they do they don't protect their ip and again no one there is no C and D. there's no one telling us to stop at least that that i know of. um but no nope. to his point if you don't protect your 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 ip then it becomes public domain so i can see why you know they would sneak have to attack do jaguar sneak attack yeah wow. it's 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 the same reason <laughs> here <laughs> the same reason i had to redesign this yeah my homebrew awards is because this yeah. is not mine i, I yeah. can't use this anymore i i was told not to use this anymore yep. and you know we all have to make it adjust adjustments so i redesigned it and you know, um, that's the way it is. I don't own that. I have to, I have to change. And, yep. and, that, and that's fine. We all, we all have to change as things go on. As things get bigger, I was fine for doing that design for five years. And, you know, it gets a bit more exposure. Somebody sees it. And, you know, and then, you know, you're told not to do that anymore. Yeah, which, 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 so, which is too bad. Because when you think about it, you're just, it's basically free marketing for Atari. I mean, they're having their symbol yeah. plastered all over the place, but you know, yeah. somehow you're you're the bad guy because you know. Yeah, I'm if, celebrating if, yeah. awesome games on the yeah. system. If, I'm the bad guy. Yeah. yeah, but of course, you know, <laughs> if you were selling them like a million of them in on eBay and yeah. making money, then I could see. 
but you know again no i'm giving they, these away by the way yeah <laughs> that's why yeah and, <laughs> that's yeah I'm not selling them to yeah. their point it doesn't matter whether you're selling it or making no. money or whatever the money is not is totally irrelevant to them it's the protection of their ip yeah and control of their ip yeah it's more simple as that. control of it exactly yeah which is too bad because you know i've saved for if they would open up dialogue to the homebrew community, they would have that control yeah. and they could do a yes. good thing. But, you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's imagine, yeah. you know, they would embrace it and like just pie in the sky thinking they would embrace these games and allow them to be put on multiple platforms, you know, PS5 and Xbox and Switch and they would be everywhere and there'd be collections of homebrew bundled together. Mm -hmm. The Atari Age collection. You know, the John Shampoo collection, the, the Champ Games collection of, of ports of these amazing games. Um, that's too bad. That's yeah. really unfortunate. But, yeah. So, with all that said, I'm still going to keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm um, uh, well, I'm certainly so, going to. So, what, what is the immediate future for you? Um, you? You said, okay, there's PRG. Let's talk about your store as well. Yeah, what's well, what's going to happen in the immediate future? You know, so immediately, I'm not changing my store. I'd still be selling ROMs. Again, you know, if Al ever reached out to me and said, "Hey, this is hurting me or hurting the scene or whatever," obviously, but you know, right. Al basically said, you know, again, he has something going on that is isn't related to what I'm doing, except for the fact that he just isn't going to publish my games anymore. So, um, so yeah. as far as that's concerned, so so from my standpoint. I'm certainly, you know, Nathan and I, we took a few steps back this week and, you know, obviously with the yeah. news that affected all of us, you wonder, why am yeah. I doing this anymore? Um, but, yeah, we, <laughs> yeah, we, we even we, me, we, I'm like, exactly. oh, really? Yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah, so, nope, nope. Soldier on. We can yeah, do it. <laughs> and, yeah, exactly. I know some people just say, hey, just make original games. But, you know, then we're back to that conundrum where, you know, I don't actually original games but we do have a couple started so i'm probably going to focus on yeah the, the chance baseball sports, hockey yeah, yeah the chance Sports yeah. series uh, mountain raider we have some other ideas that we're working on so um so that that's that's afterwards but as far as turbo arcade and elevator agent um again those are 90 percent um al's already offered to help me um publish them um and when i say help me he's not going to actually publish them it's going to be me personally right. publishing them but certainly, right. I, again, we didn't have much time to talk. He had to go on vacation, um, yeah. get away from the reporters, you know, stalking his house. <laughs> you know, we're not oh, right yeah. there. Exactly. Um, it's pretty brutal. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. So just in the short term, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Again, I may change my mind tomorrow, depending on what news happens to come to light. Um, that yeah. is whatever it is. But, um, yeah. Again, it was kind of Al suggested, hey, I'll help you get these games together. You can sell them at your own booth um, at PRGE. So that's short term. At least I think that's what we're going to do. Yeah. So there will be at least something. That's awesome. You're going to have your own booth at PRGE. That's going to be really exciting. Yeah, and I'm hoping to have it close to the Atari's booth if Al's still going to go, which I think he is. So, um, But don't touch tables. Yep, then exactly. there's trouble. Yeah, yeah, then, we're, <laughs> then, then, then we're officially affiliated at that point. <laughs> um, that's right yeah so that so we'll still be selling the roms obviously these roms will be added yep. to the store as well and uh, um, yep. as far as future development and selling the old games themselves um, you know Al has also yep. spoken briefly about if I'm interested in adding the old games to my store um, right because, that would you know, involve printing new boxes because he's going to sell he's going to uh, reduce all the boxes to zero in his own store so you'd have to Print new boxes, probably get rid of the Atari H logo, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, yeah, exactly. So the question is, do I want to get into the publishing business? So, because um, obviously that will take away right. from my development, which is what I really like to do. But certainly, certainly you have I, to get into physical things and shipping and logistics. And, yeah. And you know. certainly I do have experience with that back with Champ Programming. Um, back in the 90s, I did take orders. Uh, we shipped them three and a half inch floppy disks with a game on them. So it's not exactly the same, but. You know, it was the same thing where I had a registration program it was burning cartridges, I mean, burning discs, going to the mailbox, you know, post office twice a week at a scale, you know, you know, the whole thing. So I know how much work it yeah. is. So it's not like I'm going in blindly. Um, but to yeah. Al's point is that, you know, 
it'll probably be a little bit slower trickle um, just because, you know, you see that um, huge boost potentially when you first release a game. And then it's not like people are going to be going on selling like 100 copies of Conquest of Mars on day one or something like that. You know, so no. nothing. Things Conquest that have been out for a while, it's not going to be massive runs of it all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, again, and if I do that, it'll be so it seems to be at least a part of the community that is disappointed that they won't be able to buy these games. Um, so this would be uh, my way to be able to uh, provide that service for them if, if, if there's, there's interest for it. So, um, yeah, so we'll, we'll see, you know, we'll see what kind of, how the, how the community reacts. You know, this is, it's affects the entire community, not just the developers. It's yeah. Al, it's you, the reviewers, it's the yep. players, um, the people actually buy the yep. games. Um, so we'll see people, you know, you know, whatever. The adjustments that people are going to make. Yeah, exactly. You know, everybody's going to have to make a, a slight adjustment and reevaluate. Like uh, earlier in the stream, Splendid Nut was like, oh, I've got a, a number of games in the works that I was planning publishing through Atari Age. Yeah. And yeah. now he has to rethink what is where those are going to end up is are they going to go on physical cartridges yeah is are they just going to be digital is he going to do his own self-publishing like mm -hmm. that that you might be doing mm -hmm. um is he going to go through maybe some of the other people maybe go through a brazilian one there's people in brazil that do publishing and there's, there are other other options yep. um and 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 also you know this isn't just about physical cartridges this is about the games themselves um and how far will this extend in the future like this is this is a step possibly because there's all these games littered throughout the atari age forums for downloading yep does does that matter is it only be about the money the physical exchanging of money um legally no but maybe in this instance yes so who knows what the future might bring in that yeah. in that way absolutely exactly so who knows so um as far as yes as far as champ games are concerned um and next you know games after this you know we do have a couple of original games that we're working on and i'm yeah. not going to completely shy away from ports i may uh, do things that are more obscure um Right. And certainly, you know, I'm always open to uh, do licensing, too. So if I can find a smaller game that um, where potentially the IP holders would be open to uh, licensing, you know, certainly I would be yeah. all for that. I mean, that's there's not I'm sure there's not a homebrew author out there that's writing ports. I know yeah. Bob tried multiple times that would love to have these yeah. companies reach out to them. But, um, and and also, there's also the other route of like Dion, uh, Dionoid. Mm -hmm. um ports homebrews or ports games of smaller publishers that to the atari 2600 yep um that are amazing games but they're not like from the 80s the 90s they're more new games yes and you're i've, I've seen that emerge more and more even in the 7800 scene and the atari 8-bit scene and you know attack of the petsky robots isn't a great example that's on the 7800 so that's that's a that's wide open as well where there are approachable um ip holders of games yeah exactly it just doesn't have to be well known you know ip holders from the 80s even though that's you know let, let's face it we're all we're all kind of kids at heart right in this uh in, in <laughs> exactly. this uh you know if we're still playing atari at well 55 for me you know <laughs> almost 50 50 yeah yeah exactly so you know i cannot tell a lie 51 51 he just 51. yeah the shirt is uh, <laughs> flipped over yeah. yeah that's right yeah i just had his birthday happy birthday <laughs> exactly it's, it's, yeah so you know yeah. so there's part of us that you know we do these old games wouldn't it be cool to see robotron on the 2600 you know that's what drives us yeah know? it's not like yeah. you know do i want to see you know i didn't know any of the games but you know whatever you know so that's <laughs> As, as you know, and I'm sure people know by now, is that, you know, these games, especially champ games, Turbo, this has been, you know, two years in development. You know, this is like something, hey, I'm going to spend a week throwing a game together. I'm going to, you know, get it going. It's like, you know, they, these are major time commitments from many people, Nathan, yeah. of course, and, you know, whoever we have to do the sound, yeah. Bob. Um, so, 
you know, it has to be a game that, you know, is worth doing that people are actually going to want to play. Um, yeah. So that's something you got to take in consideration too, um, because it is a hobby that, you know, you want to, part of what drives me is that I want people to be able to play this game. I don't just make it just for the sake yeah. of making it. Some people like that, you know, some people yeah, just yeah. like the technical challenge. Can I get this to work? They do a proof of concept and then that's it. It's, you know, well, if anyone yeah. wants to finish it, go ahead. But, you know, for me, it's <laughs> proof of concept. It's cool. People are excited. Gets me excited. I'm going to yep. spend the next year and a half finishing this game so people can actually enjoy yep. it. You know, that's that's you how get I feedback. Do. You change it, and this yep. whole process, and the, just the community in general. It's a it's a fun community to be a part of, yep. and to have people play your games or to play other people's games. It's 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 just fun. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And one thing yep. I wanted to mention that um, other alternatives that we're seeking is that you know Al even mentioned it as well. Maybe he didn't mention it on that thread but certainly you know like you said he's open up open to publishing licensed games so that doesn't say doesn't yes. mean that existing games that got removed um they may come back if licensing can be secured so that's uh that's exactly. always a possibility yeah. and some games that you can tell like like galaga will never be unless like i said there's a guy at namco that just happens a little 2600 <laughs> That's never going to happen, but yeah. you know, there's, there's opportunities. Are you watching? For... Anybody at Namco? Please, exactly. please reach out. <laughs> but maybe, yeah. maybe an obscure, more obscure title like uh, Zookeeper or you know Kicks or the yeah. Taito. You know, maybe, maybe something like that or Ladybug, which is you know I think that's Universal or whoever it is. You know, I didn't yeah, know. Who I didn't know. Now. I didn't know if they're around, but someone owns that. Then maybe that would be an option. So. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, and that's that's a good you know job for somebody to you know start tracking all these companies down who owns all the rights to all these games and just reach out on mass and, and just hand them a list of games and go hey we've got some awesome games here you want to make some money yep <laughs> it won't be much but <laughs> it'll be a tiny bit and exactly. these are really cool games you yeah know? exactly or and, and free free marketing if it's not you know if it's not monetary yes. it's you know spreading goodwill and building your brand yeah that's the big one yeah I mean, that's yeah that's, that's the angle again, there. still in niche, even though you know in our eyes we feel like atari age and this retro game team is huge you know at least but we're still a very small slice in that pie it's like you know we've yeah. gone from you know it's tough. there's hundreds of us you know it's like uh, <laughs> you know, you say dozens, you know it's hundreds, you know maybe thousands but, you know yeah. even then maybe thousands you know, yeah uh, across the whole <laughs> video game spectrum where there's millions of people playing xyz you know call of duty 12 or whatever it is you know it's such yeah. an obscure piece that it's, uh, it's nothing yeah, yeah it's hard, hard to get people's attention to that so but except like, when, it's it's our whole our whole world and we're enthusiastic about it but uh, yeah exactly it's, you it's, step it's outside. a drop in the bucket yeah generally what happens <laughs> you go step outside of your little bubble like when i went to music city like, who multicon um it had a booth there thinking all right people are gonna pile in 99 percent people yeah. like they still make games for atari you know yeah yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. That was, i remember that system exactly. yeah. but you know in your head you're thinking wow you know it's a classic game command people go, you know people are gonna know yeah. oh, this is gonna be awesome it's like uh, it wasn't like that at all <laughs> <laughs> it was still a good it's very true it, it's it's definitely a humbling true. and definitely a eye awakening that you know eye opening that we, you know we you know we step out of our bubble and we're done. But when we go to re uh, retro gaming expos, we're we're the kings, yes, right? Exactly. <laughs> that's what I'm hoping. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping people will still um, go to PRG. I know I already have my yeah. flight booked and uh, you know, um, yeah. and hotel. So I'll be there. And me too. Ho hopefully, we'll have some something to show off, something to sell, something to play, just something to, to bring us together. So you bet. That's what it's all about. Yep. So. So, well, I think you covered all my questions, as uh, interviews usually do, <laughs> yeah. before me I ask them. But it's it's more of a conversation, and that's more fun anyway. Yeah, that's um, good. And and I think all the questions that people uh, were posting were were answered as well. Okay, excellent. Um, yeah. So uh, as as always, it's an absolute pleasure to Thanks. have you on the show. Yeah. Um, yeah anything just, else you want to add? Um, just one get, small go? thing is that you know probably at some point I'll be. Uh, posting an updated ROM to Turbo. Uh, um, the only caveat, yeah. I do actually meant to say this, is that since it's 120K, it does not run on a Harmony cart. i about to play it in Stella. Um, unless, unless you've got one of these. Yeah, which exactly. You don't, which so there's only three people on the planet that have it. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of a bummer, but I am talks with Fred. I'm sure, I don't know if anyone's yeah. following what Fred's doing with the uh, concerto. He's doing a lot. Yeah, yeah. Like the CEMs, the concerto enhancement, um, expand, expansion modules, I think they're oh. called. Yeah. Does that help this game? Well, not, turbo? Not on the concer- or it might on the concerto, but I know he's specifically developing a HEM, a harmony um, expansion module. Oh. Which nice. will support all these big games and all the other cool things that it does, which is, uh, you know, you can flash the game to the HEM and leave the HEM in. As, so oh. the HEM becomes a cartridge, you know. So if you want to flash nice. the turbo and play it in the turbo, so it's kind of cool. So. Nice. Well, you heard it here first, folks. Uh, that's uh, <laughs> that's yeah, so, new so, information as far as I know. Yeah, yeah, so eventually, you know, people will be able to play um, if they purchase it. And I, I think the price point is pretty fair. It's like $20 for the HEM, and he's yeah. planning on having them out by the end of the year, so which would coincide. And that's with the, the advantage of the um, the add-ons to the concerto and the harmony is they're just they're made cheap, yes. inexpensively, so that you don't have to rebuy another whole cartridge. Yes, exactly. So, and of course, um, yeah, and they'll add more. Yeah, instead of buying another seventy, eighty dollar harmony on encore oh. plus or whatever, you can just buy this and keep your card. Things will be good. So. So yeah, yeah, so I, I just wanted to mention that, and so hopefully I will coincide awesome. with the ROMs going into the store, which won't be in for a while, but you know until certainly after yeah. PRGE. But uh, um, that's the plan there. So awesome. and that's it. That's all I got. So <laughs> well, that's a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. A lot. well, it, it it was great to have this discussion with you and kind of work through the news that mm-hmm. everybody got yesterday. Um, that there are paths forward. It's not the end of the world. Uh, games will still be made. Games will still be released. There are ways that these ports will be able to be put on cartridge. Just in a maybe you'll be getting them in a different place, but they'll still be they'll still be out there. Yeah, and certainly there are some ports that I've started that I probably won't pursue unless I can get licensing, and uh, that's so it does right. affect it uh, slightly, but not, you know. Yeah whatever and so you may not be able and, to play and would you consider maybe changing cha- changing the name changing the graphics um maybe um, um yeah enough? i mean yeah that's always a possibility too so i i, yeah. I always knew changing the name wasn't enough just from experience um but certainly yeah. you know that definitely kept things under the radar a little bit longer than probably i mean you gotta not to continue on but you know some of these games have been in the store for 15 16 17 18 years so it's not like uh yeah oh my god what's <laughs> happening it's like you know Big... <laughs> it, it, it was not great it was great while it lasted and it lasted a long long time and I, but i do feel very it bad did. for the people that you know like silvio who just released uh um yeah ruby q you know for those of home yep. authors i definitely have sympathy and certainly um I yeah. feel bad for like Gorf, which just or 4K was just put in, and now now it's gone. So it's like uh, certainly a stinks yeah. for the few things that have been there, but for like the Ladybug, that the original one that's been there for 15 years, or Scramble, which is coming up yeah. on 10 years, you know, it's like oh. lots lots of opportunity to get it. But yeah. I just feel bad for the people getting into the getting into the community. Maybe a year from now, they're like, oh my god, I missed all of that. It's like when I got into this in 2015, around there. I, I was like, oh, I, I missed a lot going on in this community. Yes, exactly. Um, so. but, but, you know, I can catch up. But, uh, yeah. It, so. the, the ROMs will always be out there, you know, to play the demos and, and lots of versions of there, out yeah. there. So, yeah, and again, still play the yeah, games. some people may take to self publishing as well. So, and, yeah. you know, but again, that carries the same risk that Al is having. It's just the difference is that Atari is, you know, yeah. is much larger than Champions or anything. You know, one yeah. person, you know, make 20 cars in his garage. You know. it's like, yeah, it attracts, Atari Age attracts a lot more attention. Yeah. And with, plus, yeah. With with just name. its name itself. Yeah, Atari yeah. Age, exactly. So, you know, he's had yeah. talks with Atari for, they've been ongoing for 20 years, you know, and as their, yeah. you know, you know, people in charge change, you know, things change. It's like everything, everything changes. Yeah. So just, we just got to be, you, you know, never know. For now, I, I can still do the Atari Homebrew Awards because it is awarding things to things that are made on the Atari. But, you know, a year from now, I don't know. Yeah, it could be Classic Gaming Awards or something silly like that. It so. absolutely could. Yeah, Atari SA is 
at do, a certain point and stuff at a certain point yeah. like uh, an alternate name for the atari it, like you know if they this is extreme and not <laughs> likely to be a good solution but like at some point you could be like oh we make games we make blah 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 frog games and frog is the new name for atari 2600 <laughs> and, like everybody just calls it frog <laughs> and like frog is on all the things and they don't get any publicity for it being on the atari or whatever you know yeah. like their name isn't used anymore and frog age frog That's just yeah it's, yeah, yeah, it's called frog replaces atari so, yeah. <laughs> so if we can trick them we can beat them probably not That's yeah. right. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. but like 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 that sort of thing yep that sort of thing could only really work like With organically effort because people yeah. would have to agree like it would, the best way was you know almost viral where like it's the end joke that everybody calls him frog blah blah blah, blah <laughs> and then That's frog right. becomes the thing like you can't like decide to do things that way or it, it's a lot harder anyway yes yeah, absolutely buy so. in you know yeah, yeah. yeah. something like that anyway so well, th but if there's enough if there's enough like like opposition from I'm just talking in general. I'm not even talking about specifically Atari, but like, it, this is the sort of thing that happens when there is enough opposition coming from something like Atari or what have you, and people do start to like rebel, you know, rebel. You yeah. know, then you then you get situations like that. Yeah. Well, we'll see what the future brings. Yeah, absolutely. But it works yeah. against it works Take against the community comes. too, yeah. because like people who aren't already in the know, like they don't know that frog means Atari. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> it's our secret password. They're like, oh, yeah. I didn't know that I was a fan of Frog, but apparently. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks so much, John. Thank uh, you. It's been an absolute pleasure, as always, um, yeah. to have you on the show again and talk with us and to show off your new amazing stuff, uh, games. Wonderful. Thanks. Yep. Uh, thanks for having me on again. Thanks to Nathan. He's worked his butt off to help get this a uh, demo together yes. for Turbo. And thanks to everyone his work on, is on the chat. Stunning as always. Yeah. Thanks to everyone on the chat and everyone that's reached out to me offer their cond condolences so i appreciate it so but i swear yeah. to you we're not dead yet <laughs> we're still kicking yeah there's life in these old bodies yeah still absolutely. yet okay guys you have a good night <laughs> okay thanks john okay. have a good night bye, bye 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 i like game dev's uh, suggestion atari yeah at <laughs> ari hey it works. Yeah, it works yeah great show awesome port yeah his his games are absolutely astounding and i'm looking yeah. forward to what comes in the future from john uh especially his baseball and hockey games they um <laughs> i'll put it ew, wax up wax up <laughs> um uh especially yeah his, his baseball and hockey games they look astounding you can go to his website and check out the screenshots of those it's so weird having it out all of a sudden it's like oh i can hear freedom <laughs> uh oh just one second oh never mind we're almost done selling something today uh guy's coming soon james now do wax off <laughs> wax on wax off um to to me these were always the zero page homebrew words i can always change it to that that's true and then i can add coleco into it no <laughs> just kidding uh didn't even realize they're called the atari homebrew words oh, that's funny <laughs> yep yep good thoughts that's that's i i wanted to uh spin this news in a positive light uh, even though it is it is negative right now there is many opportunities in the future for um ports obviously homebrew gaming's not going away tons of original games are being made yeah for and we sure. just have to you know rethink how ports will be done in the future yep. so that we can play these amazing games on the consoles that we that we love um yeah jaguar wasn't affected um because those have a lot of um communication between the original ip holders uh. um as well um links i don't think there are any links games on the atari um h store um, um yeah uh should have the zph logo on the award uh, i like the h the h for homebrew on it right now never know in the future thank god james channel is called not called the atari page homebrew i have i was thinking about that's like does my show have atari in the title anywhere oh god no it doesn't it's called zero page homebrew. <laughs> oh good <laughs> i made it very general <laughs> but uh yeah if if they um if they do if somebody says yeah you can't call it the atari homebrew awards even though you're awarding awards to atari games completely it wouldn't make any sense <laughs> like i can't use like I can understand the title changing, but I'd have to say the word Atari. Like it's yeah, it's Atari. Like Nintendo's pretty bad.
for shutting things down. They really like to control things. Um, so case in point, Princess Rescue, that was shut down quick. That was um, um, at, uh, Mario Brothers. Because it looks like Mario Brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it it had the same. The art was the, yeah, it was yeah. if they changed the the graphics. Yeah. Um, and all the names, the names were fine. It was the graphics yeah. and the sound, and, and it had like the music in, in it too. Like that's that's like the way a game looks is hugely important most of the time. Yeah, because somebody designed that. Somebody mm -hmm. composed the music. Yeah, Nathan Strom. That's fair use. You can talk about Atari all you want. That's that's true. I just can't name anything Atari. <laughs> name things i make atari issue with princess rescue if i recall was the copyrighted music yeah that was a oh, big yeah. thing yeah i mean it looked uh it looked like mario on the screen it looked like the princess yeah, yeah Goombas basically what it comes down to is if it's the design obvious, of the level too. if you're just looking at it it's obviously that thing that's an issue then then they can argue Yep, probably argue, rightfully the that you know you're the, infringing the whether or not what the rules IP. on that are, are are up for question yep it's but, up to the courts and lawyers at that point and if it yeah. doesn't draw that then haven't you failed at doing you know what i mean it's like yeah. like yeah you really either you are drawing from the original or, or you're, you're not, not to or you're not yeah and you right? haven't obscured it enough yeah like it's that and line so that the word you just used obscured. the word that reveals everything which is you need if you're drawing on it by obscuring it yeah then, then you're you, making something else almost you are making something else and if yeah. you're not ultimately you are bo <laughs> it's right. just this it's whole that thing. line yeah. it's like how and close can i get it to the but, thing i'm but the question is people to enjoy the question is of the legality because there's yeah. nothing wrong with borrowing from popular culture and it yes. it's the whole thing of yes. copyrights and how long should they last and oh it's that's not a, a clear, whole other the whole, thing yeah, yeah. It, I, I do not mean to break <laughs> into that it's just it's, crack Worms, yeah, it's, worms out of this can. Yeah, it's complicated. I, it's it complicated. is very yeah, complicated, yeah. Um, and that's a discussion discussion for another thing. Is is copyright length and yeah. like, oh my god, it's been forty five years since this system's come out, and these games are ancient. It's like they're still bringing the towel for you know, bringing this rock for blood, and we just want to play some games on our old system and uh, make them available to everyone. But anyway. We've discussed this ad nauseum, and everybody can continue this in the forums, which I'm sure they will talk about it, um, and on the social media on social media as well. Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a pivotal point. I, yesterday was it's the new era of homebrew uh, from yesterday onward. Mm -hmm. Like people have to think in a different way now. And think about ports at least original games that's that's vh said c is going to be completely fine <laughs> he makes all original games but for people who do ports it's they have to rethink what they're doing um completely the before the times, before times. Yep. yeah it was the before times do you remember the before times where we can make whatever we wanted and play any game on these old systems we wanted uh they were good <laughs> <laughs> paperboy 2600s out the window <laughs> Yeah, I think it is. <laughs> you could have to call it, call it something out else. What can you call it? Newspaper lad. <laughs> and he rides a skateboard instead of a bike. Um, he can't throw newspapers. What can he say? Ma magazine guy. There, he can throw magazines. Because they're not newspapers. And he rides on a skateboard. And he has to toss them in an arc. <laughs> instead of straight. And they go on to uh, something else instead of mailboxes. Anyway. Um, <laughs> thanks for tuning in. Uh, it has been uh, quite a show and quite a couple days. Um, oh, Atari's having asthma attacks. Um, thank you so much. Uh, um, Turbo was awesome. And we'll be back on Tuesday with some more things. Uh, currently, I have Jaguar Rotary Controller Games Part 2 scheduled. Uh, but we'll see about that. And also, on next uh, next Friday, we have a big show. We have the exclusive update of RT for the 7800 from uh, Muddy Funster. And also the final digital release of EXO as well. So it's a uh, Muddy Vision doubleheader next Friday with Erlen. 
And uh, but on Tuesday, Jaguar Rotary Controller Special Part Two. We'll be playing Arkanoid, Impulse X, Kaboom, and Project W Warlords and Visual Experiences Pong. So that'll be uh, a lot of fun. Are my ten liners real ports? I don't know. That's for up to you and the lawyers to decide. That's for the courts to decide. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to see about that. Um, Thrust says maybe. That's can, the perfect can you get answer. Sued for actually, for saying Atari is hopelessly addicted to catnip. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a story. I um I put T-shirts up on T Public or somewhere else. T Public, and I put I, I I committed the sin of putting my cat's name in the store description because mm. my cat was on the shirt. Mm -hmm. Um, and my cat is a band name. I'm not allowed to type my cat's name onto T Public. Did you try Atari? <gasps> oh, that's a good workaround. <laughs> or Cause frog? Because sometimes Frog's I do want to put on, I hear. this poor cat's name <laughs> on T Public, but I got uh, a takedown notice for this cat because I named him after something I'm not supposed to. Yep. Unfortunately, hey, isn't that terrible? But I can't not mention your name. But not surprised. Yeah, do not take legal advice from ChatGPT. <laughs> yeah, you may be led astray. Um, yeah, they just did a blanket search for Atari on T-shirts. Um, there are plenty of Atari T-shirts out there. Yeah. Just don't name them Atari. Classic mm -hmm. gaming console from the late seventies, early eighties. Perfectly fine. Put my name and my cat up there. Take down. <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. What if I legally change my name to Atari? They would still take it down, but then you'd have to file a DCMA um, counter report, and then they would counter one, and then you'd have to bring out the lawyers, and you would lose, because they have more lawyers and be a lot of work. pockets. Yeah. Um, so thanks for tuning in, everyone. Master KSI, Thrust, uh, Thrust Twenty Six, Nathan Strom, Carl G, Grizzly Adam, RC Seventy, Vitoko, Gamma Dev, Nathan Strom, Mad Max. This is what Thrust said. Oh, but Atari is a Go move, so it's stolen already. True. Yeah. You just can't have it related to video games, yeah. and you're Which fine. you don't. Is, is, I don't, but they just did a blanket a search. Mad it's Max 20. It's a cat. Don't take down the cat. Don't, take down. don't do legal takedown. <laughs> don't do copyright. Ooh, legal take takedown. Uh, Mad Max 2069, <laughs> Splendid Nut, uh, Mike Letow, uh, Vitoko, Prow 7, Old School. Cafe Man 2D. I'm probably uh, duplicating names. Ivory Tower Collections. Uh, Kev Kelly. Dios Kilos. Retro Bliss Gaming. Oh, I'm going to have to give him his asthma medicine. Chris Albright. Lots of na new names. VVG Double Down. Um, and I think I ran out of names. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Legal Takedown does sound like a great video game name. Yeah. <laughs> you get some lawyers fighting each other. Legal takedown. <laughs> DCMA'd. <laughs> Subpoenaed. <laughs> so good. I will write a kill all lawyers game. Uh oh. Uh oh. That might be general enough. It might be okay. Um, so thanks. <laughs> Fair use. School. <laughs> that is awesome. Somebody's got to do that. A street brawler or like a, a wrestling game. You have different moves. That'd be so good. Uh, be but we'll be back on Tuesday. Have a great weekend, everyone. And uh, we will see you in the forums and in social media. Bye, everyone.